Pow! And we begin. The Joe Rogan oh, Experience yeah. podcast is brought to you by The Fleshlight. If you go to JoeRogan.net, click on the link for The Fleshlight, and enter in the code name Rogan, you will get 15% off the number one sex toy for men. It's a fucking solid product, and we stand behind it. We're also brought to you in by... in front of it, Joe. What kind of Woo! fleshlight fucking are you doing? Are you putting it in your ass? What Am the... I doing it wrong? Jesus. Am I doing it wrong? Are you sure? I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> well, even doing it wrong... You forgot about the lid. It you feels just so it. right. Like for people who like it in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> even doing it wrong, it feels so right. I'm sure someone must have used the fleshlight oh, that way. Fuck yeah. Must have, right? Yeah, I mean, they, I've seen some giant things up people's ass. Like a human flesh appeal. It's like a big circle of guys. Like half of them are fucking and half of them are... I saw one dude's ass. foot up another dude's Flesh ass. A dude. a dude had his foot up a dude's ass, oh. all the way up to the ankle. Wow. Was that just for shock value, like justmeat.com, or was that more like a, <laughs> I don't was that know, more like a sexual man. thing? I don't know, man. You got to wonder with the motivation behind anybody wanting to take that picture or see that picture. <laughs> you know, like, whoa. Oh, yeah. What, what is, who's, who, who's who benefiting? Go, oh, fuck, yeah. fuck. Wait, wait, Tom, go get the camera. Yeah. Tom, get the camera. Does it feel good for your toes? Who or took is it that good, picture? Does it feel good for his ass? Well, who's happy here? <laughs> who's happy in this moment? <laughs> We're also brought to you by Onnit.com, makers of Alpha Brain, the cognitive enhancing supplement. Uh, as, as I say, with all these uh, nootropics and different things that are cognitive enhancing supplements, do some research. If you're interested in this stuff, don't just buy Alpha Brain. Please go and Google nootropics and read some articles. It's very fascinating. There's a bunch of different, they have a bunch of proprietary blends that a bunch of other companies have that are great as well. You know, just go look and try some stuff out, read some things on it. Some things will react well with you. Some things won't. If you like uh, Alpha Brain but you think it's too expensive, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the ingredients list and copy it. It shows you the exact dose. Copy it, buy the shit in bulk, and put it together yourself. And here's the thing. If you buy it and it doesn't work and you don't like it, you, it's 100% money back guarantee. We try to make this as easy as possible. There's no other way to, to make it really? as That's clear cool. as possible that I am much more concerned with you not feeling ripped off than I am with making money. So I think it's a real product. I like it. I enjoy it. It's good. It works for me. Alpha Brain gives me like a, like a nice little, like, like a peppy feeling. Um, I don't know what the fuck's going on with it. I don't know what it does. I bet that stops a lot of people from taking from taking drugs. Well, some people Just like... the idea uh, that like, well, it might not work. I'm going to be out $400 or whatever it is. And I'm like, I don't want to take a chance on something that might not work. Just, but if I get some guarantee, that'd be, that'd be pretty good. What, you like drugs? You mean, what do you mean? No, like any sort of like, I don't know, mood enhancers or like, or like whatever you need for whatever else. I don't know. What drugs do people take? Uh, why would, this is nothing like a drug though. None of these oh. things. I mean, the only thing that would be close is the uh, new mood, the 5-HTP supplement, which is like a serotonin booster. But even that, it would be like the subtlest of smiles that, you know, permeates your brain. You know, have you ever used 5-HTP? Mm-hmm. It didn't yeah. do much for me. Didn't? Uh -uh. Uh, were you taking the Neil Brennan sized doses? Uh, I was taking a lot. I took more. <laughs> I saw, yeah, he said he just goes over the. He, whatever the fucking recommended DA is, he jacks that like, shit by 10. It. I'll take him <laughs> yeah. into account. Yeah. Yeah, and he just goes nuts. Yeah, but, uh, well, I thought it was really fascinating that he said that his uh, doctor, who yeah. had him on some sort of an antidepressant, told him to get off the 5 HTP because it was essentially like taking two antidepressants. Uh, there's something where it can react really badly with SSRIs. Yeah, um, but that's like half the antidepressants of that, mm. or SSRIs. But it can it can like cause you some weird overdose. What is the SSRI? What is the the actual name for that? It's like serotonin something re inhibitor. Yeah, like yeah. it adds or deletes serotonin. Hmm. Well, um, the, the, I've heard uh, there's also Brian. You read something about the dangers of 5-HTP online, right? What, what the fuck was that about? Uh, so I, uh, somebody sent me this because of uh, yesterday's podcast where I've been talking about my arm, which we've just talked to the doctor, and he said it's probably from podcasting, and I'm probably just <laughs> <a> <laughs> pussy. <laughs> and he started making fun of me, and then he and then he made that song all about how weak I was. Uh, no, he, there, there was, uh, hold on, I'll get to it. It, there was somebody sent that on, uh, WebMD that 5-HTP, uh, might be unsafe and not to take it because people who, there's been reports that people who are taking it are getting a serious condition with extreme mu muscle tenderness called myalgia and blood abnormal normalities one of those words and uh, <laughs> <laughs> really uh and so uh they said that you shouldn't take it and that they're thinking it's a contaminant 
and and some 5 HTTP products. And that um, oh, so it's not 5 HTTP. It's something that's contaminated the, in 5 yeah, HTTP. Right, bottom. right. And that there, so pretty wow. much there's like, like sour like milk going around. China, so you, you know what I mean? Oh wow! So the sour milk that's giving people muscle soreness. Yeah, muscle soreness out of nowhere. And well, <laughs> we're gonna we'll get to the bottom of that. I'll find out what the fuck that is. So if that's the case. You know, pay attention to that, folks. Obviously, don't buy shit yeah. from Mexico. But, you know, buy- <laughs> I've already talked to. I've already <laughs> talked to Guatemala and Five HTT. It's a little too cheap. Look into it. Yeah, I've already talked to Aubrey about it from uh, On It Labs, and he says that not to worry about it. And okay. That that, that they they test it like three times. Their own labs test it like three times to make sure you know that's all, all good. But he said he just you know he'll look into it more. But uh-huh. he said that's what he that. What he so it's does. some cheap company. Yeah, it's like cheap yeah. company five HTPs. You know, like when you're at the store, like you're at the CVS, and you see like, oh, there's this one for two dollars. You know, and, uh-huh. you know that's good to know. Okay, so we also Alpha have Brand, um, that's not we, well, Alpha Brand doesn't shit. have that anyway. No, this is a new mood, which is the five HTP and L tryptophan yeah. supplement. Um, I like it. I've been taking it, um, I, but. Yeah, I would I would definitely consider looking into what the whatever the fuck this yeah. web DA article is about because that that's a pretty serious. But I, I, in my honest opinion, I think the doctor is right. Like in my honest opinion, this I mean somebody just sent that to me, yeah, and I mean, that's why obviously I look, you're moving yeah, your arm in the my, same direction. My pod, over over. Yeah, I'm like the vector raptor because I have to kind of. It's almost t- what's that shit called that barbers get a lot from uh, carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel. It's almost barbers that because I'm get that shit? yeah. Never heard of also, secretaries yeah. get it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Secretaries. Um, what else? What other womanly like? I'm um, just podcasting too much. Lately. Lately. <laughs> yeah, you probably you gotta take days off, man. Ice your ice your elbow. I know. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, that's, that's ridiculous. You're falling apart, son. You're falling apart, son. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Anyway, well, like we said with uh, with on it. Um, if you don't like it, don't buy it. And if, you, if you're if you interested, go look all all the other different things that are available online. But if you want to buy Alpha Brain, it's available at onnit.com, O-N-N-I-T. We also have um, two different mushroom supplements. One's called Shroom Tech Sport, and that's a uh, one for extreme endurance exercises. Like if you're a person who likes to do like CrossFit or shit like that, if you do jujitsu or you're doing MMA, uh-huh. this Shroom Tech Sport is awesome. It's a cordyceps mushroom and B12 supplement. It's great for energy. Like um, they, the Chinese Olympic team was like the first to start using it in like the 90s. Did, Apparently did. it's like a mushroom that enhances your, your body's ability to absorb air. Really? Yeah, you're um, they, they in high altitudes. Like they noticed that cattle were eating these mushrooms, and then they were much more lively. So people started experimenting with them. I thought when you said mushroom pills, um, you thought I was talking about pill pill mushrooms. Yeah, they have those now. Mushroom mushroom pill pill. Pure psilocybin. Oh, that's dead. No mushrooms. That's dangerous. <laughs> I don't know. I don't <laughs> my friends, my friends taking them, and he's like, they're just great, man. You don't wow. get the upset stomach. No, and everything stomach. else the same. It's like THC pills. Yeah, but I feel like then you're not working for it. It's part of the <laughs> mushroom experience. Is if you're gonna I get the, try the, it. the gift from the plant, you're gonna eat that shitty body of it i have to try yeah. it i don't yeah. know where it gets them um this is nothing like that oh. this is just for endurance and there's another one for immune it's called shroom tech immune which is a great one uh it's it's a really interesting uh, way it works is the way explain explained to me is there's a, this mushroom and when your body detects it your body thinks that it's some sort of uh, it might be a bug like it might be a cold or something like that so your immune system fires up for a fight that never comes really yeah so this mushroom somehow or another tricks your body into thinking it's going to be attacked but nothing happens and so your immune oh, system it fights it off it fight, gets, gets it's like it pumps up yeah it pumps up for a fight and there's no fight yeah so it like really helps your immune system ward off colds quicker Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's. Uh, I th- I believe in. Um, I think, and here's something to look into too, folks. Is um, probiotics? I think are very important. Something that a lot of people. Is that echinacea. Uh, well, no, probiotics are live cultures. It's like acidophilus or right. um, kombucha is my favorite. I drink that kombucha shit. I drink that tea every day. Yeah. I really firmly believe it keeps you from getting sick. Blueberries, they're antioxidants. Antioxidants, yeah, yeah, they yeah, are. This up. is a little different, though. This, it, this is a live culture. Live culture oh. is actually living things. It's an organism you're taking into your body that actually fights off bad shit. It's kind of crazy, but it works. This organism works symbiotically with your body. It's is that fine. on all mushrooms, or is it just like no, specific? No, 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 no. It's, like it's different. You know, okay. some of them will fucking kill you. I mean, there's mushrooms. You fuck up and eat the wrong ones, you'll have like instant oh, yeah. liver failure. Like, there's some wow. some serious failure mushrooms out there. And somebody had to find that out, man. Somebody had to eat those yeah. things, and then they had to go, like everybody stand and watch them. And then 20 minutes later, he's fucking black skinned and foaming <laughs> at the mouth, and his whole body spasming. And you're like, okay, now we know that mushroom is. <laughs> bad don't fucking eat that and they had to know this by the way back when there was no books right there's no writing it down yeah you remember how honeysuckles were okay to eat but to that other berry weren't what remember honeysuckles oh yeah 
No, I don't you remember. Just, it's like you pull the you yeah. take them off. Have you the, seen those lately? I was looking out, for them it recently. Out, it was a one drop of honey. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've, like I've been actually looking for. The, they don't have those out here in Los Angeles, do they? Because I thought I, I saw one the other day, and I I'm like, I saw that one looks too, but I didn't actually grab it and, and see if it was one. I think they have them somewhere, but not a lot. Definitely. I miss those. Yeah, they're great when you're biking around. Yeah. Um, but you uh, just knew which ones were like yeah, fine the, ones. The, to, the purple which, pinky yeah. ones. O n n i t dot com. Enter in the code name Rogan. Get ten percent off. That's it. That's the commercial. Boom! Ari Shafir is here. Start the program. The Joe Rogan Experience. Sneakiest commercial ever. Train by day. Ever. Joe Rogan podcast by night. All day. I'm revolutionizing commercials. <laughs> I was trying to get uh, mushrooms for Renazizi and Reap. Yeah. They were in Missouri for Shroom Fest. And I was like, I'll find them oh, for wow. you. Oh, wow. And I was putting you it out there putting for people. You were putting a network? Yeah. I was like, officers. I'll call my favorites if you guys want to take part in this. But then uh, mm. somebody was like, why don't you just pick them? They're all over. Really? And I realized, like, I trust my drug dealer over what I find in nature. I had a guy came up to me after a show once. One of the creepiest dudes ever. He was just sweaty and weird and shit. And he gave me a bag of mushrooms. Hey, man, I picked these myself. I'm like, fuck, I would fucking yeah. take your mushrooms, crazy face. But you picked yourself. You know? Yeah, but who do you trust? You <laughs> trust the, a regular drug dealer? He's just a weird looking dude, <laughs> yeah. man. Well, you know, you trust you trust people who know who the theory, right, right people who are yeah. growing them. You know, you got to get into the, the deep matrix of the where to get the mushrooms. That's the problem. The other ones are super poisonous. Hard. Yeah, it's in fucking, the wrong way. I don't know. You know, I, I I don't know how much different psilocybin mushrooms look than any other mushrooms. You know, and by the time yeah. I get them, they're all dried out, and yeah, someone's just taking pale. care of them. I, I've Brownish. never seen one. I don't think out in the wild. I've never seen that red top. Oh, I've yeah. seen that, man. Really? That was on my property in uh, Colorado. Really? So did you take yeah. that? No, I didn't, but I what? just took pictures of it. Oh, that's cool. And that was the red top with the dot, with the with the spots? With the white the spots. The Mario Brother ones. Yeah. The Amanita Muscaria. Yeah. yeah. That's the one that, Isn't that the one John Marco one Allegra... See? Well, no. See, that's one. That's a very funky mushroom. It's a really different mushroom. It's not. It doesn't have psilocybin in it. It works in a completely different way what? with your body. What yeah, it's, it? it's a psychedelic, but it's completely different. And it's seasonable. It's variable genetically. It's variable from different climates. What we're getting in America, I don't believe, is the same Amanita muscaria mushroom. There's been a lot of debate on this amongst uh, all those uh, psychedelic connoisseurs, those people, yeah. those Terrence McKenna type fellows. And um, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people have taken it and it doesn't do anything. I took it once and it didn't do shit. I took it with uh, Doug Stanhope. Just weak it, mushrooms? It, it Maybe. No, I don't know, man. Jan made it. So, you know. So what Jan, were they? Jan's a fucking, he's a, yeah. he's a, he, he's a real him. head. I would he's, trust him. Yeah, he would. It's and he, head, yeah. he did the he did the right thing. He did it all right, but it just wasn't getting us. But then. Um, Was it one of the you eat, had? Did you eat any time near that time that you took it? Though? No, I found no, 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 no. We did it the right way. We did it the right way way but then uh we we mixed it with psilocybin mushrooms dug through in some psilocybin and then we went to the fucking yeah. center of the universe oh. it's like mixing them together was uh was a uh, wow was a total mind fuck mm. and you know that was uh one of the the things that they believe is uh soma Soma is was the some dark. sort of a mixture, and it's talked about with great reverence in you know the 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 Hindu texts. And Soma is greater than Brahma, greater than Soma Indra. The pill? Soma, no, Soma no, 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 no. That's just they just stole the word. Oh, what Soma is, is is like the greatest psychedelic ever, apparently. And so, so what is that? They don't know. That's the craziest thing about it. It's written with so much love, but somehow, somewhere, they lost the formula. Nobody knows what Soma oh. is. So it's all debated. Like Gordon Wasson thought it was the Amanita muscaria. Area. Uh, McKenna thought it was psilocybin. They think it might be a combinatory drug with psilocybin yeah. mixed in with some other stuff. And some people think it might be psilocybin and Amanita muscaria. They don't so know. So where is this Amanita muscaria? How does that hit you? What does that do for you? Well, it depends on where you get it. See, everybody's got to, like I said, if, if you go, I don't, I can't speak from personal experience because what I got didn't really work. Hmm. I don't think. It's hard to tell because it was like a few hours and, and it really hadn't, but it's nothing had changed. But with, without psilocybin? I don't know. I mean, it's supposed to, yeah. It's supposed to be able to. But I don't know what, in what form. I don't oh. know what part of the world you got to get it. It's, it's variable. That's the, that's the issue with it. It's not always psychedelic. But what it is is Santa Claus. 
the the fucking the image of Santa Claus being this red and white guy, you know, the image of the trees underneath the um the pine the yeah. excuse me the presents underneath the pine cones or the yeah. pine trees. They, it has a mycorrhizal relationship with birch trees. Oh. I mean, it literally grows under these fucking Christmas trees. That's where it grows. And it's well wrapped in shiny colors. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's shiny as fuck. Sounds like an Eddie Griffin conspiracy theory. It does. <laughs> it does. But it really, that's really what it is. I mean, the whole Christmas presents under the tree thing is is directly related to this Amanita muscaria mushroom. It is red and white, and the way they dry these mushrooms out, by the way, is they hang them over the fireplace. That's why people have red and white stockings hanging over their fireplace. Why the fuck else? To dry them out? To dry them out. Nice. Yeah, that's what it is. So that it's become this stocking now. What? But what it used to be is red and white mushrooms hanging underneath your fireplace. Who, where's the proof of that? It's a lot of proof. A lot of proof. There's not only that. All the old, uh, all like the old. Work. If you go back to all the old Christmas cards, they all have mushrooms in them. Mushroom symbology. Big Amanita mushroom. Uh, in they have elves. And what old Christmas? All the old Christmas cards. Look at the, the old elves look Christmas like mushrooms. The, well, the, the elves are what you see when you take mushrooms. Oh, nice. If you I take like enough, and then on top of it, the, these elves are always playing with mushrooms. They always have this Amanita muscaria mushroom in Santa Claus. Really? It's all yeah. If you go back and look, thought, like wait, hold on. I thought Coca Cola made up Santa Claus. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what did Coca-Cola make oh, up? Oh, you silly Jew. <laughs> what did Coca-Cola make up? The color? No, no. That was that was claimed, but then proof, uh, there became proof that there was an artist from uh, at least, I believe, a, a decade or two before that who was attributed to making Santa Claus red and white. They thought that Santa Claus was one color and then he was made red and white because of, um, because of Coca-Cola. Co-created the black know, Santa Claus. Yeah. The black Santa Claus? Yeah, I think Coca-Cola just created the black one. I'm going to find some pictures for you. And It was like, groove it with some Coca-Cola Santa. And so it always had mushroom stuff in it in the Christmas time? Did it grow in that time? Um, See, I, 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 I hear this. Christmas Come here, look at this. I bet there Just is. Come on over here. Come on over here. Look at this. All these Christmas things. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, I know. Dude, and those are all, all these Santa and Claus. All the look people, at this. And every these single are, person that drew every single one of those lived in California. Yeah, dude, dude, you, you're retarded. <laughs> these are old as fuck. These are from the 1700s, dude. Oh, yeah. California. Okay, look. This is old as fuck. See this? Chris, Christmas. Look, Amanita muscaria mushroom. That's a really old picture, dude. Okay, there's, there's a bunch of them. Look at them. This is like all this from a long time ago. That was the norm. A long time ago in Europe, especially, that was the norm. Give and up that website so people can is, look at this. Well, just, just, this is what I want you to Google. You know Go, just Google Santa and Amanita Muscaria. M U S. Image shirt. Uh, yeah, but you look at the identity. If you go to, like, say, I don't know where Christmas was born, it seems like it was born in Germany or something. But, uh, <laughs> but if you go to Germany, Germany if you go to so Germany retarded. and look at that like, was this, called the same year. Year, try, the war. try to find artwork of the same Christmas stuff like in Germany from that exact time period and I bet none of them had mushrooms on they all had like you know something well, else you're just, guns you're just guessing this off the Look top of your no no head, no I'm just I'm saying showing you pictures. I, no I'm just saying that but that's what I would think yeah. well you would think sir. wrong because I'm showing you pictures of Christmas cards from the know, 1700s I, I, that have I'm all these sure mushrooms there was Look some wacky Christmas cards no 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 Brian there's a lot of them look at this one right here look at this one right here with this there's an old picture of Santa and he's got all these fucking and Amanita muscaria mushrooms at his feet. Where's that from? It's from? Oh, fuck, man. Let me find out. It's old as fuck. But where's it from? Officially, old as fuck. <laughs> I'll find out the ages of the pictures. But these these are, you know, these are like ancient fucking Christmas cards. I could There's see Easter. I just can't see Santa Claus. Why would you not see it? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, I, why is this not talked about all the time then? You know, like why? Why is this not on regular TV? In the First news? of all, I feel, it's I feel this is like the Tower Seven of holiday uh, So you're stories. saying it's sort of it's just got lost, or mushrooms are just in it for? But look, there's so think, many correlations. Th listen, listen to the connections, okay? Yeah. The 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 way they dry these fucking things out is twofold. One, they hang them on the trees. They put them in the branches so they dry by the sun. Or B, they hang them under the fireplace. What do they do? You see fucking stockings hanging and on the so fireplace. The well, and see, we it was probably shiny to make wooden toys. On the tree. And, you know, it's probably they literally grow under the same tree that we use as a Christmas tree. And they are shiny packages. And if you get them from the right place, apparently they make you trip the fuck out. And then they are respond. That's the the mushroom that they believe is responsible for the you know the the writings in the Bible. It's the the sacred mushroom in the cross. The Amanita muscaria mushroom is on the cover of the sacred mushroom in the cross. It just makes sense to me that if scholars believe that there's a connection between this mushroom and religious texts, 
then of course there's a connection between this mushroom and Santa Claus. And if you add up all the things that that line up as far as like hanging it over the fireplace and putting it on trees, it totally could be possible. So is if you go to Encyclopedia, Wikipedia Britannica's headquarters in wherever that would be, like Wisconsin, and it, you go through them and go, all right, what is this Christmas to you? What do you guys have about the mushroom thing? They, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Get out of here, hippie. You know, don't. Wouldn't you think that? Well, I think that they're w not that willing like, to uh, to incorporate any sort of illegal drug ideology into their 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 work. They probably just would ignore it, even if there's a lot of evidence. Do you think sometimes that people that do a lot of mushrooms try to make connections with everything in past sure, history? Sure, yeah. definitely they do. Four twenty people. I think do that's that. what my judge. If I had to judge, like if this was a game show, that's what my judgment would be. Is like, yeah, that's just some hippie that made this awesome connection. It's a great story. And, and no, Brian, some Brian that's photos. a silly thing. Well, that's what. No, that's what I'm thinking. thinking. Okay, well, that's a dumb way to think. <laughs> Why? Because, because scholars well, like John sold Marco it, Allegra. Sold I'm not sold on anything. I'm not sold on yeah, anything, but I'm definitely not sold on you just talking off your ass. Yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just putting a counterpoint. This, I'm just putting a counterpoint. You're putting a counterpoint to a fucking guy who is a scholar. John Marco Allegro studied the yeah, Dead Sea Scrolls Yeah, there's scholars that say the exact opposite. Years. The only ones that do are religious on ones. I know, but but who, who says the religious ones? The religious. He was the only agnostic. Britannica he was the only agnostic. Couldn't it be? Uh, We're not it, talking about Encyclopedia Britannica. I'm, I'm just We're saying. We're talking that, about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, it wouldn't even be Encyclopedia. Couldn't Britannica it be part of the? Couldn't it be whatever. part of like the? Was it Christmas originally a pagan holiday? And then there's moved yeah, yeah. To it. So oh yeah. So couldn't it be part of that pagan but, holiday? Of course. Where it's that ritual. Sure. And they sort of took over that. They use those gods. It's just the, the the real question is, what's with the elves? What's with the fucking mushrooms and all these Christmas pictures? It's, it's what's kids. with the correlations? Why do these mushrooms exist? You know, And why do they coincide with this holiday? What is the big deal? But the big deal is these people were tripping their fucking balls <laughs> off, man. That's what it is. And it became somehow or another, it, it turned into a, a guy coming down the chimney and giving you presents. What it was is this was this was some shit they found under the tree. That's much more likely to me. If you've got a fucking plant that makes you trip balls and, <laughs> and ancient people find out about it, they worship that shit. You know, it becomes like a, a huge and part of their life. Could you imagine if your world was the regular world of people that lived before books? Yeah. You know, I mean, you're barely civilized, barely got it together. People are just getting by every day, they get sick. Nobody know what the fuck was going on. There was no doctors. You just died, man. You just they gave you some leaves to chew on, and you usually just fucking died. What if they found something like this? If they found that there was some mushrooms and you would eat them and all of a sudden, whoa, you'd be lying in a field and fucking spiraling through the universe on the most wild ride of, 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 of joy and ecstasy of your life. And then you would, you would want to fucking praise that shit. You would want to make that a part a of your... Yeah, you would want to create a holiday. You'd want to make it a part of your, your, your everyday life. You would, you would be worshiping it. You know that's that's the feeling behind a lot of people. What why there was all this cattle worship in the ancient world? Yeah, you know because no one can understand that. Like why why would you have these like really aggressive the primates? Cats. They did worship cats, yeah, but they didn't worship them like people worship like the Hindus worship uh, cows. Really? I think, yeah, cows are much. Do Hindus worship important. cows? They just say sure. they leave them alone. No man, you they don't, just, you they don't eat they, them. They don't eat them. They they consider them sacred. They consider them. Uh, so I don't. I don't Souls? know the no. something. Something cool. They consider yeah, them something, something cool. cool. But I think that has to do with the cow. Here's what Wikipedia says about it. And mu mushrooms growing in the cow shit. This is what Wikipedia has about it. About what? Um, Christmas. The relation to, from mushrooms to um, Santa Claus. Okay. Um, fly agarics appear. I don't know what fly agarics are. Or agarics. That's the the actual plant itself. Okay. Appear on Christmas cards and New Year's cards from around the world as a symbol of good luck. The ethnobotanist Jonathan Ott has suggested the idea of Santa Claus and tradition of hanging stockings over the fireplace based essentially upon this mushroom itself. Hmm. There's a lot of people that have proposed this. generally red and white color scheme. He argues that Santa Claus suit is related to the mushroom. He also draws on parallels with flying reindeer. Reindeer have been reported to consume the mushroom and prance around in an intoxicated manner afterwards. Isn't that wild? That's what's, what's up with flying reindeer. Reindeer love Amanita muscari mushrooms so much that when people have these mushrooms, and they huddles, eat it and they trip out. The people, yeah, they do. Yeah. Well, when people, well, the other thing about Amanita muscari mushrooms is about recycling the urine. The way to really trip your balls off is apparently a lot of whatever it is that psychoactive inside the mushroom is yeah. it passes through your body and into your urine, and if you drink your urine, yeah. it 
kicks the whole experience to what? the next level. What do you mean? While, while you're on it? When while you you're pee? tripping balls, you yeah, piss you into a, pee a cup. Yeah, you go pee a lot. I go pee a lot when I'm on mushrooms. You're, you're going to go deep, deep, deep. The guy, what? the dude who told me, who, who did it, said it was it was crazy. It was like he was tripping, and everybody's like, okay, it's if you have to so pee, weird. you got to drink your pee. And he's like, fuck, man, I don't want to drink my pee. I'm already tripping balls. Yeah. This is good. This is good. And he drank his pee, and he's like, bwah! Just really? Shot through. Yeah. Psilocybin mushrooms, that's the case. Amanita muscaria, that's the case. But I would think while I'm on mushrooms, I'd be like, dude, don't trust your... This is just the mushrooms talking. Do not drink your pee. <laughs> no, it's uh, the shaman talking. It's like the, the ancient tradition of doing it. If that's how you take it to the next level. While you're in the middle of your mushroom experience, you drink your urine. And whatever it is, whether it's psilocin, psilocybin, whatever it is, it's passed through. I don't know the, the technical components of it, but apparently... T talking to several people have done this is what it. this when guy it, says he said if, if santa claus had one eye or if magic urine had been part of his legend we'd be it'd be way easier to believe but it's that's why it's not that's why there's a dispute it's like it's not super clear <clears throat> well yeah who the fuck knows i think it's possible though there was an article about in the magazine sunday sunday times in 1980 and the new scientist in 1986 those are those are legitimate yeah well it's not you know this is not my wacky idea this is an idea that's been kicked around for decades People believe it that are, uh, you know, like there are serious scholars that yeah. that believe in this silly idea. But uh, the um, the whole idea yeah. of it being illegal is what's the most fascinating thing to me. Yeah, the whole it's idea illegal. that these mushrooms are illegal. That this is a, this is somehow or another some person has decided to pass some sort of a law saying that you can't experience this. That it's, it's bad for you. I was walking out of a pot store uh, once early on uh, at a Zen. I was like, I still felt like. It's like cool that I'm having drugs, and I saw yeah. a cop on the corner. I was like, "Doesn't matter. I'm holding my drugs." But then I realized in my other hand, I had a bag of mushrooms. I was like, "Oh, this I gotta hide. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to be so weird." You fucking dork, yeah. walking down the street with mushrooms in your hand. Wow, you just live in that crazy comedy life, son. I guess. Yeah, you Nobody guess. Cares in L.A. They don't care in L.A. But I hope it stays this way. You know, it's the the real issue is the federal issue. You know, if we could find one cool spot and if they, you know, supported states' rights, we could find a cool spot where we could make pretty much everything legal. We all got together and said, hey, we're going to have one clarity state. Yeah. There's a state where, you know, this is murder, crime, theft, all that stuff. Yeah, that's all illegal. Arson, illegal. The Rapes, stuff. illegal. Yeah. yeah. The rest of it, shut up, man. The rest of it, just shut the fuck up. There's too many goddamn laws. This is this is how it's gonna go down. This is where the money's gonna go here. This is gonna be legal. You know, this will be regulated. This you know you have to buy it in a store. Well then you'll know it's pure and it's tested by the government. That's where the government can help out. Test mushrooms. Yeah. That's where you want you want to help out. You want to really be of service of the people. This is what we do. We get rid of some of the government jobs. You read the John Hopkins study, right? We, yeah, the John Hopkins study said that people taking mushrooms, uh, even just one experience, significantly affected them for decades significantly affected their personality yeah. and changed it for the better. I've, I know psychedelic experiences changed me. I know, I know every time I, I take them when I, and I have like thoughts of, uh, of what I need to do right or what I'm doing wrong or what's, what's fucking with me or, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, that's, those are just jolts of reality that you don't get unless you take a psychedelic. You can, you can yeah. get, you can get like pretty so deep you when you meditate. Outside you really yeah. like easily. You could pr get pretty deep when you meditate, and I'm not above uh, the idea that some people can get to psychedelic states naturally, because it's been written about f by so many people. I think it's a discipline issue. I think it's just like, like you could tell someone, hey, uh, you know, I could teach you martial arts, and uh, you could go and uh, kick somebody's ass, and then you're like, really, are you sure? And then I give you like one lesson and throw you in there yeah, like, with a guy like Marcelo Garcia, and you just get manhandled. You're yeah. like, I could never fucking do this, because I don't think it's a one... I don't think a lot of people yeah. that what what you think is possible due to meditation is based on your level of meditation. How how deep have you taken it? You know, I mean, how relaxed do you get? How centered do you get when you meditate? Because yeah. some people get super distracted, and it and it never gets more than a yeah, it never gets more than a surface I sort of like a relaxation. Every time I go real deep with mushrooms, I take a little. There's like I see like these universal truths, and mm. I can sort of hold on to it barely for like a second or two, or like a, a day. Yeah. But then it's like the more I go, the more I can bring back and remember. Remember. Yeah, I'm like oh yeah, this thing again. It's right. All about you know. It's always humbling, right? Always humbling. Yeah, it's like you don't matter. You don't yeah. matter. 
Well, you do. Everyone's just you do. Same. I mean, you do. You you have intent and you have you know will and you can spread positive energy. You you do you do matter. Yeah. You know you matter, but I mean, goddamn, there's <laughs> is a lot of us. You yeah. know, and we're all a part of one thing. You know, it's not if we all matter, then you matter as well. It's not that you don't matter, but goddamn, it's big. It's fucking giant. It's all encompassing. It's not just your house. It's not just your car. It's not just your street or your neighborhood. It's the whole fucking universe, and it's all together in one giant fucking soup. We mm -hmm. just can't feel it. We just can't feel it. We feel like there's, well, there's distance between us and Mars. There's no distance. Everything between this and that, there's something there. Okay, yeah. whether it's dark matter or shit you can't see or stuff we haven't discovered, there is nowhere where there's not something. Yeah. There's no, even in a vacuum, there's something. There's something everywhere. And, you know, whether it's subatomic, whether it's, it's, we are connected to everything everywhere. And that is impossible to recognize without some sort of a, full-blown psychedelic experience it takes something like that to feel it because otherwise it's just a bunch of words because i thought all those words before you know i thought all those words like yeah well, you know it's kind of yeah, cool i think we're all kind of connected and yeah. you know and i think yeah the universe is huge and you know i had all those thoughts before psychedelics and i had them with you know a certain amount of clarity yeah but there's a big difference between I feel like it sucks you out and just makes you see like you're just one of even in your state of, of so many people that you're just like a blip and then you see time before you and after you and you're like yeah. oh my god yeah it's insane it's insane to think that you know that we have this short amount of time here and it seems like as the time goes on you just start figuring out what the fuck is going on yeah. you know like as you get to, that's that's like the thing about people today we live long enough to see the hustle we live long enough to see the bullshit. You know, if we were Romans, man, we would all be long dead. All of us. We're in yeah. our th you're in our, your 30s. I'm in my 40s. We're dead people. Yeah. We're dead. There's no <laughs> way we'd be alive. You yeah, know? And yeah, if we yeah. were alive, we'd be totally crippled. We'd have lion bites on our dicks and <laughs> yeah. shit. And big fu one of us would be missing an arm or something, you know? <laughs> you, you get fucked up back then, man. But today we can live and we live safely and we have enough nutrition and you're eating vitamins and everything and you live long yeah, enough to see the life. goddamn hustle. Ten years ago, they said one out of two people in England would live to see a hundred. God damn. Wouldn't you love born, to live in a castle no. though, back in the day, like where you had the little courtyards, the little houses in between, you know, like inside the in castle? A castle? Yeah, like a, like a really big one. Oh, no, yeah, I, don't, I, I think that would be crazy because you you have this one giant house and everybody around you has little houses. That's the dumbest way to live. No, no, no. Way. I mean, like, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that be cool just to like experience it for like three days or something? Like I that? guess. Like a vacation. Experience what it'd be like to have all those people building. in those little houses want to kill you those and other take yeah, your yeah. gold. Yeah, I wonder if it was like that. Can you imagine that if everybody else is starving and there's this giant house with people that are eating gold sandwiches yeah. <laughs> you, know I mean? like, yeah. the, the, so, you sound like you're describing Bashar Assad just, Bashar Assad was yeah, that he's the leader of Syria <laughs> oh really yeah it's like is everyone's that? starting to revolt but it's like I still got the guns oh wow is just that what's going everybody. on over there what, it's it's how crazy is the that whole Arab area the whole Arab yeah. Spring thing and what this is nuts man I took that guy in my death pool did you really yeah it's a uh, strange, strange time for that the whole part of the yeah, world. Yeah, they're all yeah, internet making everybody like, wait, what? That, yeah, they did what over there? Really? Yeah. Well, they they that was see what's possible. Problem. He let them have the internet. Really? Is yeah. that what happened? He finally like went lax on the internet, and then they, he was like, nah, it was his downfall. <sighs> yeah, that and the CIA, bitch. <laughs> you know the CIA had a little piece. Well, that's of that. what they said. They said they're all <laughs> saying it's outside influence. Like you shouldn't be listening. That's that's spies that are starting all this. <laughs> But maybe, yeah. That's the best way to overthrow them. Get their own people to do it for us. Yeah, sure. Arm them. Arm them. Yeah. Help them. And also, them. all we're trying to get them to do is just live free. Yeah, right? but that shit don't work that way. <laughs> Make the new boss. Same as the same old as boss. The old boss. <laughs> That's what's going on in Iraq right now. Iraq, apparently, is just a fucking mess right now. Really? Yeah, there's like a civil war about to break out. That's what they always said. As soon as we happen, as soon as we left, that's yeah. what's going to happen, right? Of course, man. We, we we you know, there's a vacuum, and when there's a vacuum, someone's going to seek to fill it. And there's a lot of people that are still alive that were alive back during the Saddam era, you know. Yeah. And those those people are going to try to get control of that bitch. 
and then there's new people moving in, and then there's also the idea that you know the the connection between you know Iraq and Afghanistan and all of our resources, and you know, what, where the fuck is this country going, and why do we have a hundred different bases all over the country or oh, yeah. over the world? It's like. You know, what are we wasting our time and our resources on? Is this really necessary anymore? Or is this just a bunch of people who have contracts and we keep giving them contracts because this is what we've always done and that's how they, you know, gotten involved. That's how they keep politicians oh. in office and, and then we're stuck because that's what it seems like what it is. We're fucked, Shafir. This is what they said, what Occupy Wall Street finally said. They're like, the problem is if you get sponsored by a big corporation, you know, they give you a bunch of money for your campaign, mm -hmm. they can effectively fire you by withholding that money that you need to get elected again you know saying good luck doing this without you know 500 million dollars in your in your in your ad budget this year or how much it is probably a lot more i don't know you need to get those bitches mushrooms yeah <laughs> right yeah. that's what we need Take to do in the christmas that's a good answer to a lot of things get Take those mushrooms. bitches on mushrooms i tell it to a lot and of people it really is true i was like when's the last time i did some mushrooms maybe you should, here's, here's some. sounds like you could use last them right time now. i did mushrooms yeah. i found something crazy out like i had what? a huge bag of really good mushrooms and i took half of them and tripped my ass off hardest i've you know super hard trip uh yeah. super visuals hang on hold on i want to say this real quick i don't want you to get back to the story this is what i realized everybody's like oh the mushrooms i get are super good and everybody says that, but they really mean it's mushrooms are super good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. Then and then I. Uh, Yo, you ever got bad mushrooms? No, <laughs> never. The, well, no, the, I have. The really? first time, the first time I took it, had the greatest time. Second time, I ate like two hours before, and was just like sitting on the couch watching Adventure Time and going, "Wow, this is all right." Well, but then, the same, but the I took mushrooms. more the second time, and it was the same mushrooms. And oh. uh, the first time, I tripped my ass off because I didn't eat anything else the whole day. Um, well, it also could be, you know, I've heard of uh, people getting mushrooms. Actually, I heard you of mushrooms. You said it had some mold on it, and the mold well, gave you like food poisoning. It, no, it mushrooms it, no food I think I think that's, that's what's gonna happen. I think your sometimes you get upset. sick from mushrooms, and that's usually it because See, maybe the mushrooms. I've are, never gotten sick from them. My friend barfed his first time. I got a uh, billy goat stomach. I can I yeah. can eat some shit. I'd never barfed, but my friend who gave it to me the first time, who made, used to make them for everybody, was said you will get. You feel nauseous, like you're going to throw up. He's like, you won't throw up. Just sit down, look up in the air for a while. The feeling will pass. Fear factor completely changed my whole ability to withstand smells and, and people vomiting. Oh, you can handle anything now. I'm immune. I'm completely really? immune to getting sick watching someone vomit. Wow. You know, because you, I used to get, I used to physically gag if I smelled puke, like yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. You remember? You know a what it was bird. like. Baby bird. I was getting nauseous. Yeah, yeah baby, baby bird was no problem for me, man. I just uh, sat right through every that. Every time the wind would shift and you'd catch a whiff of it. Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was horrendous. Baby Bird, if you don't know, was the greatest gag in the history of radio. Greatest radio day of all time. And Ari and I were there. Uh, and we, Bill Burr. And Bill Burr and uh, Jimmy Norton. Norton. And w what it was was there was this crazy kid that they had working for Opie and Anthony. And his name is Pat Duffy. you got to back up this, tell what Baby, what Baby Bird is. Yeah, well, this is I'm going gonna, I'm oh. gonna to explain it through this way. I'm just going to explain this kid. And they can get this kid to do anything. This kid brushed his teeth with dog shit. He was he was a, a maniac. He's a fucking maniac. I saw him drink other people's puke. I saw him drink a glass full of other dudes' pukes. Dudes threw up. There was like some sort of an eating contest. There was a, there was a uh, eggnog drinking contest. Yeah, but that's this was a different one. I'm talking about oh, a different one. Okay. But I've have seen him I've seen him do some ridiculous shit. Yeah. Before this. Okay. Uh -huh. So we had uh, a bunch of their guys there for the egg drinking contest and pat from unaki is the ace in the hole he wins that bitch every year he's got diabetes yeah, he's, he's got diabetes take a shot as soon as he's done with it yeah so he's not supposed to be drinking eggnog <laughs> in the first place and he's drinking like fucking gallons of it he's a big boy it's a double shot yeah. every 60 seconds yeah and he's up to like 70 70 when did, glasses when did or people shots start like chucking Oh, it man. seemed like seven, eight in. Some people, some people. By the way, this is non-alcoholic. This yeah. is just eggnog. Um, because if he drank like seventy shots, he'd be a dead man. You, you yeah, know, he'd be a dead. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so, uh, what was your question? When did people start 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 barfing? Because well, like he got up to like seventy. Up. Yeah, he got up to like seventy shots. I believe it was something insane. It was ridiculous. And he said he was going to puke, and we were trying to figure out what to do with the puke. And just as a joke, I did not think anybody would say <laughs> this. I said, "Why don't you have this kid lean his head?" into the into the the garbage pail and have pat throw up in his mouth <laughs> i mean 
I just said oh. I came up with the dumbest oh. shit ever because I I didn't think anybody would say yes, and we were on edibles at the time, right? <laughs> Probably ninety nine percent sure. Ninety nine percent. Yeah, I always am if I do Opie and Anthony. Um, so we were, you know, high as a kite, and I never thought anyone. Would it was just going to such this. crazy extremes. Yeah, it was ridiculous. The dude lay, he laid on his back oh with, my God. with the garbage pail and put his put his body into it. Like he was getting opened up, a, yeah. a wash yeah. before a haircut, just all the way back. Yeah, it was one of those big p- tubs, you know, a nice, good sized garbage pail. And he leans back and opens his mouth. And this guy, Pat from Unaki, and it's available online, right? You can watch it. Well, I, I had two of the videos online. One got taken down because somebody complained Star that it was fans. disgusting. But, but there's another think, one on there. Can you find it somewhere? Oh. Just find, uh, well, just we won't, look we up. We can't play it. Why can't we play it? Because we don't have that technology at this here. You know oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, either way, at this one, oh, we need so to set great. up that technology here. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but so this, this dude... I mean, you could just there's Google, a picture Google Baby Bird. There's, there's pictures. A picture online, I, know I, I believe there's video too. The the amount, the volume there's that came out of like his he's, mouth. He's enveloping the other guy. It was insane. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen anybody ever do. I mean, he's hurling, hurling <sighs> onto this guy's face. And it's like a cartoon throw up. It doesn't totally doesn't look real. You remember <laughs> it's like pouring it's just, out a bucket of water out the window. It was insane. so much. It was, it was insane. So much. This it, giant oh. fat man just unloading. And you know what? I talked to Opie and Anthony. They said they would never be able to do that again. What? They said they can't do that again. Why? Insurance reasons. Insurance reasons. They've tightened it's up. It's actually dangerous to drink down that all much milk. Fuck yeah, it's dangerous. Probably. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's dangerous. We're glad no one dies. Somebody died in uh, Sacramento, I believe. Yeah. Was it Sacramento from people. water? Mm-hmm. They, they were drinking water. They, they had a cut. Lots of water. See how long yeah, you do it. She, she, she died from a, a overdose of water. It's on break.com. Is it on break.com? Bird, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Go check that out, folks. Trust me, it's worth and it. And it's just on YouTube in also. Sheer ridiculousness. Oh. It's just one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen a person do ever. <sighs> we were there, Ari. That was so great. We there. It was we so great. You were there, right? No. You it weren't was... there, Brian? No. You put the videos but on. I, you, you were sending me the videos. Was listening and I was later. Oh, that's right. He, um, I wish you were there. The barfing started like seven minutes. People would like throw up and they were out. And then more people started. And then one guy barfed into some. Yeah, uh, Fruit Loops. Oh, and that's started right. Eating it with a oh, spoon. Oh my god, that's fucking that same kid, Pat Duffy. And it just ramped up. Yeah. It oh, was like, it was like, that's I'll, right. That's what you started. eat his Fruit Loops. Oh, that would be great. And other people start right. because of that. Oh, that's right. I forgot that part. And it was just like oh, building and building, and, and there kid, was so much barf in the air. If you want to have, a, if you want to be a shock jock, that kid is the greatest oh. intern you could ever hope to hire. I mean, yeah. that that kid's a goddamn kamikaze. If he's still alive. If he's alive. He's alive. <laughs> he's alive. He messaged me on Twitter a while oh. back. He, he, and they kept throwing it and stuff in, in Roland's face. Yeah. And he would almost barf. They kept like oh. showing it to him, them eating oh, the Fruit Loops. It's disgusting. This is the picture. It's the fr- If you go Baby Bird O&A and do a Google image search, it's the first one that pops up. Oh, what an amazing photo it is, too. Come on. Lord, I want to show this to Joe. It's just so silly. It's so great. Anyway, what were you saying They about can't that? do that anymore. There's massive law... Massive um, lawsuits, massive, uh, you know. Just, uh, really? You, what, yeah. what, what it is basically is, up too much. you know, they've t- they've clamped down and they've made sure that there's less probability for getting sued. And when there's less probability of getting sued, there's also less a probability of something fucking crazy happening. Supreme and Court entertainment just took yeah. on the case. You would love this of um, getting rid of the FCC standards on network television. Really? Yeah. They said pretty much since 99% of people have cable, it's ridiculous anyway. Right. Channel 7's okay, but channel 8's not. Like, right. wh- why? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and they're hearing it now, whether they have to do that now or not anymore. But they think can still find people. people. Are gonna, unfortunately, so people are going to fight it, though. There's a lot of, like, pro family, pro Christian. They probably a lot just of have money. to rate it. You know, like, there will be a program to be able to show you if there's nudity at God, <laughs> look at that photo. My God. Look at that photo. Jesus so much fucking bar. Christ. Here, let me see. So you you much can put bar. that picture up. You can put that picture up in the... Ugh. Is that the only way to do it here? Uh, no, no. Ari emailed it to me. I could do it. Okay. It's, it's showing up. Is that the most ridiculous shit? Uh, it's so, it looks like he's a spider, like breaking it down with his ensigns, breaking uh, down that other guy. It looks like a cartoon. <sighs> anyway, we'll talk about something else <laughs> yeah. before I get sick. 
God damn. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. It's no fun. I mean, if, if you want to have a business, though, I mean, you got to think, I and mean, when you get involved in something like, you know, serious, look, yeah. this is gigantic, fucking huge company that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, they we're can't not lose for everything. everything. Yeah, because you assholes want to drink eggnog. <laughs> hey, milk. idiot face. <sighs> That's the problem, man. Yeah. You know, Anthony Cumi, is, uh, his show is now on uh, iTunes, and he's got a video on it. He has video on iTunes. Yeah. I How's to, he doing that? I think, I don't know, but, it's, well, he's paying for a video, a video host. Wow. Uh, but uh, I, I tried to do it twice now, and, and the video wouldn't play. Like, it, his bandwidth must be fucked or something like that. Cause, yeah, I would imagine. I think <laughs> he just did it. I bet he probably doesn't yeah. realize how much money he's going to have or, to pay in bandwidth. Yeah. Well, you, people don't realize you have to have a host. Like, if you, if you put something on iTunes, and it, it is free, you know, I mean, you, you can put your shit on iTunes, but someone has to be yeah. downloading it from somewhere. And right. you have to have a host where they doubt, like iTunes is not like storing your stuff. Right. And they're not providing bandwidth. They're basically providing a link to uh, a, a website, a server that you pay for. Right. So, and what's funny is that there's a lot of web hosts. Like, unfortunately, I use DreamHost, which uh, all my life has, has been great. But I had to right. switch to uh, a cloud computing thing where, like, uh, but it was unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage. Oh, I just leave and that. Then, and then, no, I'm on that. Oh, great. And then, and then, but what they don't tell you is, no, wait, it doesn't count like unlimited memory of the computer or something like that. You know, like, <laughs> like if there's too many people, that's you know, how they get you. Then, yeah. So then you have to raise your bandwidth. And it's a bullshit. The whole thing is a fucking crock. So it's, crock they tell the you worst. it's unlimited bandwidth, and they tell you. Yeah, but they trick you because then they're like, oh, yeah, it's unlimited all that, but, you know, it's uh, your memory, you know, and your computers, you know, you, you got to have more, you know, they trick what? you in that. So they make you buy more, more, more hard drives, com more computer, or more power. RAM. Like, what do you mean by memory? Do you mean by data storage space or is it like, like RAM? Like RAM, pretty much. So you buy more RAM? Yeah. And then, and then, so I like now you're done by RAM. But what's bullshit is there, there's like DreamHost. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm going to start bashing you now. But uh, DreamHost, like, will have this thing where you can DreamHost. You can search. You can search like how uh, you have graphs of how much you use, how much RAM you use every hour, right? And so yeah. you, you, like, I think I'm paying for. I forget how many. Let's just say a thousand uh, RAM. Uh, it, it will, and I'll be using like 400 most of the time. And then out of nowhere, my shit will crash. And they're like, oh, you need to up your even more RAM. You gotta think though, dude. You're you're running a lot of traffic. No, no, but know? what they're saying is that my RAM has doubled in one second and crashes the computer. It, but it doesn't show it on the graph. And they're like, oh, it's just there's spikes. And I'm like, yeah, spikes of doubling in one second, and you don't have it on your graph. Oh yeah. And so they then they make you go you? up more. Yeah, they can't prove it to you. Oh, they say you go up higher for no reason. It, it's so it's fucking you? bullshit. Do you feel like you got ganked? Oh, I'm getting ganked every day with really? this fucking dream host. And what's <sighs> funny is I, I've had a website up. with them for a long ass time. And Can't before I was this. on before I was on cloud computing, before when I was just spending like eighteen dollars a month, I still had a website that got hit a lot. You doing all the videos like Carlos Mencia videos and all those other videos we used to do all the time. My shit got hit a lot and it never went down. It never was like a problem. But they get you on these cloud computings and now it's just fuck dream host. That's all I'm saying. Weird. Wow. This is a very angry Brian. Fuck Dream Host. You see him? He's all fired up, man. Science stuff. Gets passionate about his poor little site. It's, you know, I feel like he'd be like a lot more comfortable. He just had a Wikipedia page. Yeah, yeah make him a Wikipedia page. <laughs> I'm getting you, beat by a wrestler. So you Please really believe me. that if you get this Shorty Award thing, that somehow or another, this yeah, will get what, you a Wikipedia what a few page? Administ administers who have contacted me through Wikipedia, uh, they're just fucking trailing you along. I want to tell you a story about <laughs> George C. Scott. They don't like you, and then once once you get a Shorty Award, they're gonna go, yeah. "Who the fuck gives a shit about your Shorty Award, bitch?" Yeah. And then you're gonna be like, "God damn, George I work so hard to get that Shorty Award." They're making me work for it, those Wikipedia. Bitches. Making you bend George over. Scott won an Oscar for Patton and said, I'm not going to that, and just didn't show up. Because what the fuck do I care? Wow. Well, he was a bad motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see The Hustler? Yeah. George C. Well, Scott was a scary oh, yeah, character in The Hustler. You owe me money! <laughs> the scary dude, man. This is after he he's saying he's screaming that to Paul Newman after he fucked Paul Newman's girlfriend and forced her to commit suicide. <laughs> and then he said, You owe me money! I was like, whoa. Like it hasn't stopped. Yeah, he was, oh. a, he was a scary dude. dude. That was a great fucking was movie, dark, man. That movie. Imagine how good that movie must have been in like, what was it, like 64 or something like God. that? It was a really old movie, you know? Imagine how good it was then.
<laughs> fucking, there's some movies, man, that just hold up, and there's other ones you watch, you just go, what the fuck? Like, what happened? What happened between, you know? I always got uncomfortable when I saw stuff like that in movies. I don't know why. It made me, like, feel extra bad with some girl being, like, unfaithful. Or, like, really? really fucking over somebody sexually. That always made me feel like, oh, God. That bothers you the That's most? That's way worse than if you're Is experimenting that... on homeless people. Hmm. Did you, when you were young, did you yeah, have like, a girl me. that you were really in love with and she, she left no. you for another dude? Uh-uh. You always thought that that was going to happen, maybe? Maybe no, that's maybe because it, so it didn't wrong. happen. See, to me, yeah. my oh, so you got it. I, like, had I, never a, did. I dated a, a gang of whores yeah. in a row, <laughs> <laughs> and I caught a bunch of them banging other dudes. Yeah. And so <laughs> when that happens, it's like it lowers your expectations. And so you're you know, like, whatever, you really, it's, it's fine. It happens. You, you know, I mean, I, I realized as I got older that it was mostly my fault, and I was attracting the wrong kind of person <laughs> to my life. <laughs> you know, you attract, you're attracting it's the worst someone that you don't know. You know. A whore just likes to fuck, and yeah. you're like. Like, damn it! Well, I fell I, in love. Well, part of it is that, and part of it is subconsciously. I think you're just trying to attract the wrong person possible. Subconsciously, you don't think you're worthy of anybody any good, so you just get these <laughs> nightmares that you know are never going to last. Yeah, and then you get stuck. I love how Doctor Drew always says that. <laughs> like, do you always date this type of person? Like, no. I mean, yeah, they all hit me, but what do you mean? <laughs> There's no correlation, right? My dad hit me. Uh... People are fucking strange with patterns, man. They're strange yeah. with getting locked into things, you know? Like, I, I knew dudes, that, and I never understood this, that could not stop going to the track. They would go to the racetrack. Yeah. And to Addictive. them, it was their crack, man. They, you know, there was yeah. guys that didn't even have any money, and they would go and hang out with dudes who had money, hoping that if the guy won something, he would give them a gapper. So they could fucking put it on. Yeah, well, that's the gambler's a creed. A gapper is, you know, you know, you throw 20 this guy's way. He sweats your match. You throw 50 his way. Like, it's a big thing in the pool world. Like, say, if... You know, if you are hanging with a bunch of guys and everyone's broke and one guy wins a bunch of money, he'll give his friends some money if yeah. they're hanging out with him and they sweat his match. What you do you know, mean sweat like, his match? Cheer watch, for him. Yeah, watch his match. And it's sort of like when you give guys gappers, it gets, you know, it spreads a little of the it's It's the right intention. It spreads <laughs> yeah. a little of the money around. That way, one day when you're broke, because all it's those like honor pool among players. Thieves. Yeah. Wow, that's all nice. those pool hustlers, all, all professional pool players at yeah. one point in time were probably broke. Or will be broke again. It's a tough living. Yeah. You know, when you're out there gambling and you're, you're trying to play in tournaments and you can't get roles and you're trying to make money and then you're trying to pay for hotel bills and it's a hard life. The, the, the life of the professional yeah. pool player out of all the skill games of the world might be one of the hardest lives. They yeah. don't make that much money, man. It's hard. It's a hard gig. It's hard to put it together. There's only a few guys at the very top that like really make money. Hard gig is so much easier. <laughs> Our gig's the easiest, but you got to be funny. If you're yeah. not funny, our gig is t death. Yeah, if you can't catch a break. If you're not supposed to be a comedian, our gig is the scariest thing in the world for a lot of people. There's a lot of guys who aren't supposed to be comedians that are doing just fine. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it is weird. When you're like, what? We all, everyone agrees you're bad. It's, yeah, it's weird how some guys, even though they're terrible, somehow or another they wind up sticking around long enough to get paid for it occasionally. Yeah. And not a lot. But every now and then they'll like get a gig here and a gig there, and Some you'll make plenty of money. Yeah, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, is it just a making friends thing? A time it's a lot in? Of it. It's totally a lot of it. Because there's a few people, and we know who they are. We won't have to say any names here. But when they go on stage, it's like they're they're doing their best impression of a comedian. Yeah. You know, I th I think that's everybody who starts comedy. Sure, but these are like then ten they year stay veterans. In it. They never lose yeah. that. Like, let me do the impression. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, you know those where you, you work with them on the road somewhere and you're like, what the fuck am I seeing? Yeah. But oh. they trick somebody into oh, hiring one. them somewhere. I think there's enough comedians now that they don't ever have to do that anymore. <laughs> it's not necessary. There's plenty of us. You know, there's enough comedians. You know, you just got to like get in con There needs to be a network where people can find where the good ones are. <laughs> I sense a resurgence. I, sense, I think comedy oh, yeah. is coming back. All this junk is helping a lot. People get to know people way easier. Yeah, yeah. Podcasts help for sure. And they're like, oh, these comedians are like a cool thing. They're yeah. all sort of talking and stuff. And Yeah, having having the podcast and having people come to the shows because of the podcast. But I think even beside, outside of the podcast, like like Louis C.K., you know, yeah. his uh, the situation where he's selling his things online, Oof. I think that, that gives a big resurgence to it, too. And people hear people the story. People excited like, about oh. it. I just remember when the last Comic Standing started, the Comedy Store numbers went way up. Yeah. Just because yeah. everyone had remembered, like, oh, yeah, comedy. Comedy is fucking great, it's man. It's so I, great. A, it's such a great night. Yeah. As a fan, you know, before I was ever a comedian, man, it was my favorite thing to do. Yeah. 
I, I would never see. pay a lot extra for it on New Year's because I've seen it too much or anything like that. Uh-huh. But like, it, it's just a good fun date. Yeah, yeah. Especially you know if people you know, are in town, whatever. Yeah, we we've gone on the road and um, I, I have a couple of times and I'm in town when someone I like is playing somewhere and then I go yeah. see him and I can actually sit and watch like a, a I'm telling you, man, Yeah, it's fucking when I, great. When I get high at the store. Sebastian is so goddamn funny. Really, he's so fucking funny. Yeah, it's just so fun to watch. I was like, "Yeah, somebody made a, a date out of this." Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a cool art form, man. I, I love watching it just as much as I love doing it. Yeah, we're lucky as shit, man. I watched Ice Road Truckers the other day. That's way harder. It's way harder. Imagine being an Ice Road Trucker. <laughs> Imagine that. I know the worst job. This is the worst job. What's the worst job? Uh, Tijuana hookers cost used to cost seventy two dollars, and it's the breakdown was se- uh, sixty for the girl, which she splits up with the pimp. However, I'm not sure. Uh, 11 for the room and one for the cleanup guy. Whoa. That's the worst job. Whoa. One dollar cleanup jizz spots and, and probably over a lot of and over and too. over again. Not just jizz. Oh, yeah. Tijuana, people just Evidence. shitting all over everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything's going on it's down hot there. During the day, they're still at full capacity in business. It's really crazy how close that is to San Diego. I, everybody used to do that as their trip. But could you imagine, man, being a person who lives in Tijuana and just knowing. That San Diego's right there, oh, and right there, there there's white people with seven million dollar houses on the beach, and they're drinking margaritas and talking about their pedicure lady. Gross border yeah. town. You're in a, car, a house made out of cardboard. <laughs> it's just twenty minutes away. You can drive to their house in twenty minutes. That's insane. How weird is that? How weird is it that there's a third world and the peak of the first world? San Diego is a pretty goddamn nice they city. Have some rich neighborhoods it's a beautiful there. place. Yeah, La there's Boy one. There's one island. I forget what the island is. It's off of San Diego. It's like a, a little, a, a very <coughs> small and very exclusive island. Yeah. Where it's one of the richest pieces of real estate in the country. The, That's where Donald Rumsfeld. No, Catalina is off of oh. this area. It's like Santa Monica. This one is off. It's a small okay. jump between. This and so I, I forget what it's called. Elite. Super wealthy people, like ridiculous, stupid fucking mansions, you know, $20 million properties, shit like that. And that's like a drive to Mexico, man. It's yeah. so bizarre. And I guess, I don't know, I mean, I guess the Mexicans, if they wanted to, can get in a boat and just sneak up and get there really quick. Just pull into their neighborhood with a boat. They come to get you. For huh. real, man. You could be like oh. hardcore Mexican you know g- gang bangers they have some castles there hardcore too, huh? mexican drug dealers and just getting a boat just get in a boat and figure out a way to just do it by cover of night they kill people they're going to rehab there do they really they're like i said don't get off the sauce what yeah really yeah. where in in to all the border towns i like how you said that too don't get off the sauce like you're a 1940s movie <laughs> yeah. bad guy see the fuck is that don't get off the sauce see you listen to me see <laughs> Watching an old movies like watching a movie from another country. I've been yeah. watching some old movies lately. I saw Billy Madison. Not so old, but that's Billy it's Madison. Pretty yeah, recent, it's like man. twenty years ago. <laughs> We're talking about like Clark Gable type shit. You're oh, talking yeah. about Billy Madison. I'm talking about watching Dumb some Dumb. stuff from watch some stuff from like the 40s and 50s. Uh, I love it. I'm addicted. Different to language. It. I, I love looking at that old you shit. It's so Rock weird. Empire. Yeah. yeah. What, what did you? What have you ever seen that's good? Uh, I just watched. Um, How green is my uh, valley. Uh, w- that's a great that? one. With the the one with Clark Gable, uh, Gone with the Wind. Oh yeah, that's I think we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, but it was just weird. It had like yeah. the slavery <laughs> aspects and that and stuff like that. Yeah, um, well, that's what's going down back then. Uh, there was something else I just watched the other day. Have you ever seen uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? No. It's a uh, Elizabeth. Um, what the fuck's her name? The bitch who got married a hundred thousand times. Elizabeth Liz Taylor. Taylor yeah. Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor when she was hot as fuck. Yeah, she's my hot. God. When she was young, my God, that woman was hot. That's why we still talk about her. Whew. She, she was now? hot. I don't know if she's still alive. You know, I don't know, but she's, you know, okay, she's getting old way. there. Yeah. She's married a couple gay guys along the way. It got, it got <laughs> yeah. weird for a while. Poor <laughs> oh, yeah. lady. It's when she was young, though, man. Woo. God damn. I mean, it falls apart for everybody, but. Yeah. I think for her, it was... <laughs> he used to have such a great saying. Did you ever watch see the, the, wall. the color purple? <laughs> Everybody hits the wall. Yeah. You're like, in 800 billion years of development, no one's, the, wall the wall is never the wall lost. Is undefeated. Yeah. The wall is 6 billion and O. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever beaten the wall. The wall's coming, bitch. It's coming for you, too. Did you ever see the color purple? Something. Yes. I think. I was see the what? Color the color purple. purple. You know what? I might not have. 
Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I was really stoned and yeah, watched Oprah. it. You're like, Oprah? And it was like really weird slavery, sexual slavery shit. And it was weird. Yeah. Well, that was a big part of slavery. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. A big part of slavery was this, the, the master coming down right. and, and banging the yeah, slaves. Danny Glover. That was, that was legit, man. They used to have children with slaves. I couldn't slaves. watch it. Yeah, but that's what it was about. And I couldn't watch it. It was just too too creepy. Could you imagine? I thought Color Purple was right after slavery. You thought, what was Color, Color Purple? Purple? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I didn't actually see it. It's one of those that I always intend on seeing, but I never get around to it. Yeah. But I, I, th I think it was like super common for the slave owners to have sex yeah. with their slaves. Oh, yeah. Benjamin Franklin, right? Didn't he have a ton of grandkids that way? I wonder how many of the male slaves had sex with the, the women. Because that must have been going on too, had where women were the, ignored, and you know they, oh, they, they got the male slaves to bang them. God, it's the like, punishment for that was just clearly death. I wonder. Is, is it worth it? I wonder. I wonder if you're allowed to. There must have been those stories of having ha like a, the, she gets pregnant. She, who did it? Yeah, um, I mean, it has to have happened. Yeah. Listen, man. It, as long as there's dudes slinging dick, there's chicks jumping on them. As long as I've been it's black like, people, they have been attracted to white women. Yep, and it's as like, long as they've been white women, they've been attracted to black dicks. <laughs> yeah, it's like grow my weed and smoke my dick. To the slave. <laughs> that's what she would say? <laughs> no, that's what you would say to your, your slave. Grow my weed and suck, suck my dick? Smoke my dick. And smoke my dick? Yeah. Okay, Brian. Sometimes write these down and go over <laughs> them and go, is this worth interjecting in there? <laughs> Grow my weed so and smoke my dick? Out and you're like, damn it, that wasn't good. So it all comes from a good place. We have to remember that. We're talking about, I was. you guys were talking about slaves, right? Mm. Fucking your slaves. Yes, I get you. And I just said, I wasn't doing a bit, I just... Sorry, he's trying to joke. It's okay, buddy. It's okay, buddy. We're just trying to keep the conversation moving. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm going to be in Minneapolis. When are you doing? At the end of... Um, are you doing Acme? Rick Brunson's House of Comedy. Oh, what is that? Is uh, that a new place? Yeah, he owns a place in Edmonton, too. Comedy Man, trip. I love Minneapolis, but I can't fade that fucking wintertime, son. It's a mall of America. I might never have to leave. So you go... You fly into the mall... No, I won't have to go from the, the flight. Somehow or another, you're going to be outside. That. Yeah, that's you're gonna the You're going to have to be in that tube. Yeah, I hate it. I hate the winter. It's Every booking, I'm like, they're like, what do you got in February? I'm like, what do you got in April? It's cold as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it gets like zeros. Uh, that's what yeah. I'm going to Thursday. And Damn. it's going to start Ohio. snowing Thursday. Go to Ohio. Yeah, right now it's 50, but supposedly there's just like the sleet and freezing rain and snowstorm uh, shit going the day I <clears> land. I, I hit freezing rain once in Ohio. Did a 360 on the highway. Yep. Really? Yep. Nice. With me and Chris McGuire. 360. Coming, yep. You flipped all the way around. Really? Yep. All the way around. Missed the guardrail, missed everything. We just kept driving. My dad used to. It have was driving over the bridge. You know how you go over yeah. bridges, and bridges are the place where black oh, ice forms? Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's actually the wind coming yeah. over it freezes it. So, how about that? A 360 on a bridge. Did, what'd you hit? Nothing. Wow. Yeah, spun around. Well, that must be God, right? Yep. Yeah, that must Word. be. Word. <laughs> Why isn't it God, Ari? I mean, maybe it is. Fucking maybe it's the secret. Maybe you blow on the ice and not it. make that go. Maybe you engineered it so. My dad used to have this giant suburban, the old style suburbans. Oh, those are great. He got like a second and third motor in it. He just kept it going. <laughs> but he would see people start to skid like like in the in the snow and like come at uh -huh. him like a you know, ten miles an hour, just like that. And he's just like, Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Pump it. He was like, Let's just get some cash. Yeah, he's just driving. And he'd be like, tank. Just, let's just do this off the books. Oh, that's what he did. Yeah, are you serious? Never fix shit. <laughs> it's gonna be about oh looks God. like eight hundred dollars in damage, right? Let's go. Let's do this. And they would give him eight hundred bucks. How many people hit him? It happened like every other summer. So other what winter. would he do? Would he just go out when it's snowing and try to make some money? <laughs> no, he wouldn't try. But if it's not, there's this one stop right in a university, and when you cut through university in Arcola, it would be like it was just downhill, mm -hmm. just super, and it was like people would start to go there, and just couldn't stop. It could cover with snow. And if you're at the bottom of the hill, like they're coming right at you. Nothing you can do. Uh -uh. I lived on a street that uh, completely froze and became a hockey rink. And me and my girlfriend's, or my uh, rather my sister's boyfriend, sat on uh, the roof and uh, watched. We drank beers and watched cars crash. <laughs> we watched oh, cars wow. slide down the hill. They had those videos smash. online. Yeah, that's that. my favorite. People video. watching yeah. that. We yeah, called the so cops. We called the cops. And the told cops, them cops dangerous? fucking did the same thing. They did the same thing. We told them, we saw the first car slide by the house. Yeah. And we were like, what the fuck? And I go, dude, I think the street is ice now. And so we, uh, we opened up the door and looked, and it looked like ice. I'm like, it looks wet for sure. And I got up to him, I'm like, fuck, it's just ice. Just a sheet of ice. A whole, the whole street. Wow. And we were on a hill. So the whole street is just a sheet of ice. And one after another, cars just came down and boom, hit the curb and went flying <laughs> off into the fucking woods. 
I love went it. Over, over and over and over, this happened. So we called the cops immediately. So the cops came down, same thing. Bang! The cops bounce off the curb. Boom! The cops slam into the other cars. Just Everybody, keep going. Yeah, they were piling into each other. And all the cars that were parked on the side of the street. Yeah, they were all stuck. They were all stuck and jammed and fucked up. Like some of them were in like little ditches, and some of them were like uh-huh. in the, the woods where the bushes were and shit. And they just kept coming. <laughs> yeah, some people got through it. Some people had some good skills. Some people just slid with it and, and kind of like uh, and, and they straightened it out. Control. Yeah, they managed to come down the hill not too crazy. Oh, that makes it more exciting. You yeah. never know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the real the people that really fucked up they fucked up because they came down the hill like they were driving. They wanted to drive. Speed. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, oh fuck! So if you're going. 40, 50 miles an hour, whatever the hell you were, and then you hit that ice. That's that's it, bitch. You should have taken bets on like what the next car is going to do. It makes you think, man, fuck living anywhere where it's that cold. Yeah. We were talking about this before the show, um, that uh, there's an um, uh, ice-bound um, fuel tanker in uh, Alaska. It's stuck. Yeah. It, the, oh, the, was it before the show? The ocean, yeah. The ocean's frozen around this fucking yeah. boat. And so they got to send a Coast Guard ice cutter so the ice cutter is breaking the ice around this Russian tanker. This Russian tanker is just stuck there in a just gigantic skating rink that's the ocean. And it's just creeping around, pressing against the hull. Could you imagine the trillions of pounds of that ice? Sound. Just it would be so scary. Oh, my God. And you're thinking it's going to pop. The whole thing's going to pop, and I'm going to die. I'm going to die right here on the top of this fucking Frozen bullshit. There was an X-Files episode from Frozen Tanker. Really? Yeah, they got frozen in, and then some virus was out, too, to kill them. Oh, fuck that. They were turning old at a, at a super quick rate. Oh, with the virus? That's what it was? But yeah, hmm. and so they had to drink regular water. The only water they had was infected, and so it would make them turn old, and they couldn't get any water. They were frozen in. There was nothing so what did they do? They got rescued right before they died of old age, and then they got sent back to the regular age. Oh, they get sent back to the regular age. How convenient. Yeah, well, they, they fed them regular water or saline. Oh, that's or all it like took? That. Yeah. Oh, we just need to get them saline. We yeah. can reverse this. <laughs> Fucking stupid plot. Who wrote that? How dare you, whoever you are? That was at the end of the X-Files when they were basically just phoning in. I'm trying to think when that was. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it was like this isn't this isn't. They it were out there time. though to find something. I don't know why they were out there. There comes a time when some people just phone it in. Yeah, a certain amount of seasons like, lost. Hey, we're done trying. Yeah, that's was, why uh, athletes always post date their giant contracts because like I might get another contract. I'm gonna, I'm done working. I'm not gonna make thirty million. What do you mean by post date? Million. They get like more money as a, as the contract goes. Like uh-huh. Ten year contract, so you're making like three times as much in the tenth year as you are in the first year. Oh really? Yeah, but that's when you're gonna be way worse. Sure, unless you're some crazy yeah. person that's completely dedicated to always being the best ever. Yeah. You know? How bad did Michael Jordan fall off before he quit? He didn't. He didn't. Did he quit the first time? He was MVP level. No, not when he quit to play baseball. When he quit, quit. Quit, quit. Um, when he came back, he wasn't quite as good. Yeah, he came back after that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. he was bad. Then he said he really hurt the Wizards, the Bullets. Really? Because everyone would sort of stand around and watch him. <laughs> it was Jordan's time, so everyone else got worse. Oh, that's crazy! That's yeah. funny. So they got to give him the ball so much. Yeah, like Jerry Stackhouse and people had to like watch him. Really? Sort of play. Like he's got to be our first option. I used to be. Now I'm the second. So I guess I'm just not as into it. Really? Yeah. That's fascinating. It really hurt the Wizards because then they, they could have been like a they got enough one or two pick, but instead he just came. So they ended up getting like that eight or nine pick. So how long did he play with them for? I think a year, maybe two. So that was it. He took off the time for baseball, like one year. Did you take for baseball? Maybe two, maybe one. I'm not sure. I wonder what that. He was wanted to about. be like, well, my dad saw my last game. His dad got murdered. Oh yeah. I remember yeah, by the yeah. side of the road yeah. in North Carolina. What the fuck? Yeah, and then he was gonna buy the fucking Hornets when they were still in Charlotte, but the owner got super Jewy and greedy about it, and he was like, "If you buy it, it'll be worth more." So I want more money. What? Yeah. A, what, a Michael Jordan kind of, owned franchise would be worth more, so you got to pay him more than this place is worth. <sighs> what kind of ridiculous fucking logic know. is that? Then he lost it. People are anyway. funny that way. I, you, you hear some ridiculous claims that people want, want you know, the people yeah. that want things sometimes. It just makes you just go, what? Yeah. That's a pretty ridiculous one. Yeah. Some like, no, what's just it worth? Unreasonable. Well, he brings that money to anyone then. Some people are just unreasonable cunts. Yeah. You see David Cross on Conan O'Brien last night? No. What do you do? Is David Cross Jewish? Um, yeah. 
Uh, he he was hilarious, man. He he was promoting one of the movies he did was Chipmunks Two. But he's a pretty out there atheist, though. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he was promoting Chipmunks too, and he was just like bashing it, like "Don't fucking go see this movie." And one of the producers, like calling out a producer, and really? he even ca- called her out as being a female. He didn't even say her name. Really? Yeah. And he goes, you know, blah blah blah. He just went off, and then he started saying, you know what? She has all the qualities of why people, uh, when they say they they hate Jewish people or something like that, or oh like my like, God. It, like 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 it was like so uncomfortable. And even Conan, you could tell they edited something right out of there because it was like one of those weird cuts where it's like, oh, really? Let's talk about this other show, you know? Holy shit! It, it was weird. I think you can watch it probably on. Whatever. David Cross does not strike me as an angry guy. He was upset. At this. I just ran into him at the airport the other day. He was super pleasant. Oh no no! It, uh, he just seemed like he was pissed off at somebody no but but then I mean, that's what i'm saying i'm saying if someone got him that riled up that he would be angry on conan he was just doing it. to um separate himself from the fact that he's doing chipmunks, chipmunks too, too chipwrecked when he used to like mock all movies yeah, like that he even really? said he said the movie that that's what he's doing he said that even the movie Maybe. is a giant commercial for whatever that 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 uh, boat company is that they used in the movie. Uh, boat company. Uh, what's the, one of the cruise cruise ships? Oh, no. cruise line? Yeah, it's like one of the cruise ships. He's like, it's just a big fucking commercial for them, anyways. And and he just started going off on the movie to that point where he's t- saying the movie's just bullshit and it's just a commercial. Really? Well, it was I mean, that it's... much worse than the first Chipmunks that he also did. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was so much worse it. that he I couldn't see David it coming Cross. from the first one. I saw. He it. chose to take the money, but just like shit on it afterwards. <laughs> well. well. If it's funny, if he's, is he shitting on it and being funny? Is he just joking know. around? I don't know. I'd call it up. I'm sure it's Maybe there. I yeah. Find that. Yeah, if it was on last night, I'm sure I, it's I there. read a thing on his uh, website where he had to defend himself when he was doing it the first time, that all these yeah. hipsters were angry at him yeah. for doing the Chipmunks movie. <laughs> like, yeah, that and care, like Men man. in Black, they were mad at him for that. It's and so they had, yeah, he had to defend himself. What do you care? He's doing a little kids movie. Who gives a shit? Yeah, the, but that's that whole so scene silly. that whole scene used to shit on like Tim Allen for doing like the Santa Claus. And you're like, it's a fucking the, kids the movie. The whole cares? scene is a bunch of bullies who were picked on when they were younger and they became bullies. It's not all. I shouldn't say the whole scene. It's not the whole scene. That alternative but scene. That, back then. There's, it's part of the alternative scene is the pointing fingers at people and the talking down about people and the shitting on people. You know, look, there's a lot of people that are nice people and I don't like their acts. But yeah. they're nice, and I like seeing them. There's a lot of people that I like seeing. Name seven. I can't. <laughs> I can name a few, but I wouldn't do it on the air. There wouldn't be seven, but there Except might be the four. There might be five. No, there's plenty of people you don't there's like. There's a guys. lot of people. Oh, that, a lot of those people you don't like at all. Yeah, well, they're yeah. just, you know, there's annoying people. But it, it, the but the point is, there's, there's a certain uh, in and it f- club you know, being a part of it, that yeah. al- that scene, the alternative scene, and there's a, it's a very judgmental and sort of like a bitchy little scene. You know, I'm not, I don't yeah. want to generalize completely, but the the well, idea that I always believe, got was yeah. that they were like the dorks in high school, yeah, and now, now they're powerful. They're, and now they're powerful. They took the power, but you, they're they're turning on other people the same way people turned on them in high school. It's yeah, like it's not as like, bad as that now. It's no. kind of way better. But yeah, yeah it seemed like I totally. It was, there, was, there was a vibe of that. Yeah. Bert, Bert Kreischer told me a horrible story once about uh, a, a bunch of alternative guys being mean to him, and I was like, you know, like it's it's so stupid, you know, when when you you see someone that it's you just homerism. Know, yeah, it's just like our thing, just like saying Brooklyn's the best or Stockton's the best, and it's like, it's clearly not. Well, you know, there's a. Like, okay, but it's just like saying our thing is the people we happen yeah. to run into are the best comics in the world. And it's like, and not other people that you randomly didn't run into. I think it's also a thing where people want confirmation that they're on the right track. And the yeah, best way to do that is, is to shit on people who are on a different track. So you got to make your team the most powerful team. Yeah. Yeah. What is that, just man? Where, like, the people want you to be on their fucking your, your cell phone provider. You yeah. Know? They'll, yeah they'll they like, get mad if you're not. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. You're still with AT&T, bro? I Come thought on. you were smarter than that. I thought you were smarter than that. <laughs> Because you want to be 100% right in all your choices. Yeah, right? And just yeah. like, no, in my neighborhood, uh, Verizon's not good. In yours, like, it is. It's a re- difference. It's really like a religious thing, too. Yeah. It's, just, it's all the same shit. We're fucked. We're stupid. We're a stupid monkey. We're not supposed to have this kind of power, Shafir. That's Everyone's the real issue. To whatever they want. We're still supposed to be figuring out consciousness. We're, we're, we're not supposed to be working on nuclear bombs at this <laughs> stage. You know, We're way ahead of ourselves, technologically. Right, Brian? Mm-hmm. What are you looking at, Brian? I'm trying to get this clip for you. This is when the silence attack. You're watching something. So I have to lying. watch fucking commercials. Yeah, that's just how it goes now. You can't watch a YouTube clip anymore. You got to watch some 30 seconds of bullshit first. Very, very annoying. Yeah, god damn it. And this is five minutes. This was five minutes of commercials. What? Yeah, it's on Team Coco's website. Wait a minute. You have five minutes of commercials before you can watch five the clip? Five minutes? No, no, you get to watch like the first like 
40, oh, the first or, break. 20 minutes or something oh. like that. And then they make you watch like a five minute commercial oh. break. So they make you do it. They do it just like it's TV. Regular TV. Yeah. Wow. You can't find, there's no YouTube clips of that or Hulu from that Well, I, I just have a feeling that the ones I will find will cut off before. Oh. It's, I, I mean, at least, at least this is sort of some sort of an alternative for them to be able to advertise on uh, yeah. videos and, you know, yeah. and promote these videos getting out there. I mean, if you all you have to do is watch some 30 seconds clip here or there. They do it on South Park Studios too, in between breaks. Do they? Like every once in a while they play a 30 second commercial. Not much though. And they have the kids cursing, so it's way better. So, Brian, did you find it online anywhere other than the uh, Team Coco website? No. I heard that uh, that show is not doing very well ratings wise. Oh, yeah. Everyone's saying that. That's, the same people weird, weren't man. watching it after. People okay. loved Conan O'Brien when he was on NBC in that time slot. And for whatever reason, why can't they follow him? It was, why isn't it the same those amount people of people following only, him? I think some. I, I guess you can DVR it, but I feel like those people were. I don't know. People liked liking him. They liked the idea of liking Conan. But you would think you would. But have... they didn't really watch when he was on earlier. Hmm. Really. I mean, they didn't watch. You can blame it on the lead and all you want, but those people weren't. The people weren't watching. All my friends were like that's way better. I'm like, when's the last time you watched it? Nobody well, it is a it. It, it is a weird thing that they had. They when they did that Jay Leno thing, when they had the Jay Leno yeah, show at ten, then they had the Tonight Show at eleven. That was wonky. Uh-huh. That okay. was a, that was a silly I idea. Got everybody bad. talking here, about here it. Here it is. Uh, okay. So uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It just in your professionally worst thing that ever happened to you. Yeah, it's um, it was just it was a miserable experience because of. He's uh, talking not about the, being the in the movie Chipmunks too. I just um, I had a I was forced at legal point uh, to spend a week on a cruise ship, and I know you and your family love going on cruises. That's and, all uh, we do. I know, I yeah. know, I know. <laughs> So I'm not trying to... About it. I've never been on a cruise in my no, life. No, Conan, stop it. It's no. me. <laughs> uh, All right. Yes, let's just say I love you going on cruises. You on the Disney fun time cruise and, uh, you know... Um, so far, it, it sounds it's, fine. It's, it's, now, how could they legally... Why would they legally want to make you be on a cruise ship? Explain I that to me. I don't know. I don't know. It was terrible. Well, it was, there was no reason for me to be there. If you, if you see the movie and don't... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was, and it, I mean, uh, first of all, chipwrecked. It's a pun. You know, kids, five-year-olds love puns. They yeah. love it. They love wordplay, yeah. and uh, and it it's a big commercial for uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. Is, is the, the entire movie? Yes. And um, <laughs> and they thought, won't it be fun to get David on there? And uh, and the scenes I'm uh, that take place on the cruise ship. Uh, I am always in a pelican mascot foam rubber outfit where you cannot see any of my flesh, <laughs> nor do I have any dialogue. <laughs> well, wait, if that's the case, uh, I'm sure you said to them, get a stand-in, get someone else to be in the foam rubber costume and, and take them away on a, on a cruise for a yeah, week. Yes, um, I, I tried that line of logic and uh, reason, um, but... There was one producer who, everybody else had my back, and the director was like, oh, we don't, it's fine, we don't need him. And I'm in the middle of Todd Margaret, too. I was in yeah. London, and, and, uh, and, uh, and they're like, no, you have to go. Or it was more like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and there's this one producer, and I won't say, who, but uh, she is the personification of what people think about when they think negatively about Jews. <laughs> so, to give you, you know when, when, when people conjure up... Uh, no, no I don't. Uh, that, that let's cut. talk about your show, The Increasingly Poor Decisions of Todd. Margaret, very funny show, you, I'm sure you enjoy. And then there was a cut where even Conan's arm like moved a little bit. I didn't see the cut, but I oh, definitely saw him oh, pretty uncomfortable. It? You want to see the cut? Oh, no, I don't care. Oh, okay. um, yeah, wow, that was uh, strong words. But I wonder if he's like yeah, really good friends around. with the girl and he's just fucking around. Yeah, it could be that, that he was like. Serious. It could be that he was like good friends with her, and that was just a joke. Bashing a movie that just was released that that, that person's producing, I doubt it. <laughs> did did he, was he bashing the movie? Yeah, he, he like said, he "Don't joking. see the movie," and then he said, "It's just a big commercial for Carnival Cruise Lines." Right. Well, did they make him do the movie? Is that what happened? It was he contractually obligated to do the second film? No, I, don't I don't know. know. I think he was just pissed about being on that boat for for a week. Yeah, that was the bit. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. It didn't offend me. It didn't seem that bad at all. Yeah, I mean, the movie is what the movie is. If <laughs> you made a joke, see you made a joke. Like, don't say it. It's for five year olds. Yeah, he's That's a fucking said. comic. It's not for him. He did a job, and it's not it's not his gig. You know. I'm just saying it was funny. Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> well, he's funny. David Cross is fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, it probably sucks to be him and be one of those movies and take all that hipster shit. Those hipsters yeah. were probably like super mad at him. <laughs> they were, dude. You fucking totally sold out. And See then that, that, that's selling out. Thing dude. with that with that restaurant show. No, what? Oh, you gotta look at it. What is it? He went off on a heckler, and then somebody, but like to where I don't know, it got weird. And some some comic that was there wrote up about it, just saying how it was so fucking weird. Oh, I did hear about that. He was trying out some new material, and someone was filming him. Yeah. Yeah, and he asked the lady to stop filming him because he didn't want it to get on the internet, which is, uh, you know, ra- valid, especially because he was yeah. doing a free show. Yeah, but just the bashing afterwards. Who, he bashed people? Yeah. What did he say? It's just calling her fat and ugly. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know. So, you know, it got uncomfortable, which is fine. It How happens. bad was it? Did you see it? No, my friend did. He was there, and he was like, yeah, it was super uncomfortable. He just, you know, you've, got, you've done it before where it's like, ah, I went too harsh on this girl. You know, it's we're not a hundred percent. We're guessing. Like, where's the line right now? Well, not only that, you can we're be ang- you could time. be angry and, yeah. and lose your you could composure have no sleep, a little. Or your girlfriend yeah. could have just said oh, something that makes you fucking mad at women. Or it could be the just the seventh day in a row where you've been heckled. Yeah, you can't get through your shit. Who knows? What well, was but it? With just a woman saying, holding up the camera? Or was it someone it was just heckling? One girl. Her? She said she just had her thing. She said, "I'll oh, sorry, I'll delete it." And he's saying what you didn't see was her. Uh, you have to look at it. What she's saying, he responded to this comic. Said you were fine. That was well written. You're a funny comic. Some new girl. Uh huh. And he goes, but you didn't see us when I asked her to shut it off. Her roller eyes and and mouth asshole to her friends. Well, you know, I I see his point of view, but yeah. I see her. My buddy too. was there, and she go, he goes, yeah, I saw her do that. That was after he was ripping into her. Like after she said, oh, I'm so sorry, I'll turn it off. I just well, who stop. knows? I mean, we're just commenting. You have yeah. to be there, but I was talking about last night. There was like, why? What? What? Why are some people not able to just say like, oh yeah, yeah, it wasn't the, that wasn't the best. Well, some people never want to be wrong. And yeah, some people are really young, wrong. too. It's, like, it's okay. Yeah. Well, it could be. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? We'd have to hear him talk about it and them talk. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he might we'd say have something completely different. different. Yeah, we would have to actually see a video to fucking tell the truth, yeah. really. To be able to Read decipher for things. ourselves. Yeah, I don't really kind of get you into don't it. Care. Yeah. No, don't That's care good. at all. Did you uh, see what happened with Stanhope? What? The kid uh, stole his shit and was like literally verbatim putting what? Stanhope bits on his blog. Really? As if he's this fucking, you know. Just saying it in front of like a camera? No, wrote it, wrote it. Art, oh, you know, wrote written, it down. written little really? articles as in his blog entries. Oh, what did Stanhope do? Oh my God, Stanhope went, in, went after him with the power of Thor. Stanhope went onto his, uh, his Facebook page and posted in every photo on his Facebook page, you're a fraud, you know, like little jokes about him being a fraud. Stanhope uh, put it up on Twitter. So, of course, the swarms of human beings who went to this guy's website, and the guy had comments up on his website. And yeah. His comments were just filled with people saying, you rip it off, Doug Stanhope, you fucking hack, you this, you that, and just torturing this poor guy. Yeah. And, and Stanhope did it for hours. <laughs> for hours, he just had people who just fucking just going after this poor fuck. And the guy apparently is a comic. You know, he just tries to... <laughs> Tries to be Mr. Cool Guy and and, and he's a comic too. Yeah, he oh, tried nice. to be Mr. Cool Guy and steal Doug Stanhope's material and pass it off as his own. <laughs> so, so he's just getting tortured. Oh my God, he's done. He Hilarious. had to pull his Facebook. The next day, his Facebook and his blog were both there's down. Screenshots of it all, and there's a Facebook page all about it. I forget the name really? of the Facebook page where oh, it yeah. shows what, like you know, like the they con- saved that it. Stanhope wrote on each photo. <laughs> 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 yeah, Stanhope wrote some funny shit. Well, he, he was, was his dad. I wonder how sad his father would be if he knew his son was a fraud. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, I mean, Stanhope just kept going after the guy. But, the, you know, the guy is like so retarded. Like the, the way he did it was so dumb. He just copied a, a famous comedian's work. That's what you're going to do? You know, you want to come off as like a guy who, <laughs> really? I mean, did you think that somehow or another yeah, no one thought would, it'd be okay? It's okay because people were reading it instead I used to of play hearing all the time it. In college, For, did just you like, just to pass grades? Yeah, just to pass. I was like, I don't want to do this work. Fuck, just, right? Yeah, you know, just copy someone else's work. They can't do that anymore. No, because if you have a file, there's programs yeah. now that they can run that file oh. through and it'll recognize plagiarism. But I wasn't trying to say like, like mm-hmm. I didn't want any recognition for what I've done. <laughs> like, right? I didn't want to yeah, of course. You just wanted to get out of your situation. You're just forced to get me that spot. There's software now to to, to just 
Wow. Yeah, there's software, awesome. online software. There should where be. You they can write find nice songs. Duplicates of that. your work. That's online. cool. I didn't know teachers had that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you're fucked now. My buddy John Wilbur, my my brother-in-law now, I guess actually, my brother-in-law's brother, but uh, he copied word for word out of Cliff Notes one day, <laughs> and uh, the teacher was like, "You copied this from Cliff? I can the same exact paragraph. There's not a word changed." And he just stuck to his story. He was like, "Nope. No, sure didn't. No, I made that up." Wow. She goes, this entire paragraph, there's not a word changed. <laughs> well, you know, uh, if he's if he's that confident. And yeah. she, <laughs> nope. And she I don't think that's trouble. <laughs> what kind of a teacher is that? It was it was one of the non-Jewish teachers we bust in. Oh, one of the non-Jewish teachers. Yeah. Like they couldn't hang? I think eventually she was like, Ugh, fine, whatever. Was she it like care. just they couldn't deal with the Jewish men? What was it? They're probably like, look at this brat. He, well, he refuses to admit it. Fine, I don't give a shit. Then fucking copy for the rest of your life but the jewish teachers would come down on you for shit like that is that why you said non-jewish yeah like there's, the non-jewish -Jew teachers more, were easier more the non-jewish ones we just didn't respect really yeah they just didn't have our how come we could run over them i don't know <laughs> i was thinking about this lately there was some teachers you all agreed we're not going to respect you really and year after year everyone makes the same agreement nobody talks about it wow and there's some teachers like you don't fuck with Robert Krakauer. Yeah, what is that, is. man? What is it that some kids just like certain teachers and everybody gets along great? I don't know. It might be like hidden, like nonverbal cues you're giving out, or, you know, I have no idea. There's weak teachers and there's strong teachers. Yeah. They all have the same curriculum to teach. <sighs> what that has got to be the biggest fucking problem with this country. It's got to be what? the biggest problem is how kids go to school, the education mm -hmm. system, you know, coming out of it with your fucking head together. Yeah. Trying to decipher all the nonsense stupidity and fucking programming and and the idea that you know no one ever gets pushed into uh, our field no. no one ever no one ever says you know what ari you're always cracking jokes in class you're a funny guy you obviously no. need attention have you thought about going to an open mic night no one's ever said that to you have you thought about maybe being a stand-up comedian yeah no you have to get some job somewhere yeah you have get to. some job stupid even when you were doing it for a little while they're still like come on how much longer the preparation for a shit existence. That's the worst part about it, man. The worst part about it is it kind of breaks your soul when you go through shit boring classes in school. It breaks your soul for the idea that you're, it prepares you for the idea that you're I always had, gonna have to do this. I had this. a teacher, he taught modern American lit. Um, and his deal was this, he goes, you will never have to know anything about what <laughs> Joseph Conrad wrote. What you were learning here with the Bachelor of Arts is how to get reports done on time. Whoa. Because that's it. That's all you're learning. Jesus. You're not going to have to apply any of this. Fitzgerald, when is that going to come in your regular life? Never. But you're going to have to learn. When I say 9 o'clock on Tuesday, have it on my desk. That's all they're preparing you for. Wow. I think he's right in a really large degree. Yeah, he is right, for sure. I mean, that is what ultimately it is. The, this, the, the, that's what's getting measured, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you can't measure how much you're learning. You measure how, much, how well you're doing on tests and how much you know, effort you're putting into your... Your paper. Why are there measurements? It's supposed to be you're just I going to learn. People it's are like lazy as fuck. We want to make sure you're doing your work. And not only that, it's not just about educating people. It's about educating people and preparing them for work. You know, because that's yeah. really what it's all about. And there's there's a certain amount of discipline that you're just not going to have. How would you be able you... to get it, like a creative kid, to nurture them from the start? Psh, fucking hard, man. The schools are real. I mean, they know they have art. Right. Well, you know, we got to we bit. we boxed ourselves into a bad situation as a species, as a race, as a as a civilization because what? we need a lot of people doing shit that sucks. Oh yeah. It's not like as a child like you're groomed into a world of happiness and 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 prosperity and fulfillment and no, there's a lot there's a maze and yeah. there's a fucking million pitfalls and million jobs that you can get into that are not going to be satisfying to you. You have to you figure your way through those. That. We less. need people. We need someone. We need war machines. You ever meet you know? somebody and when, when you're trying to explain to them why they're wrong or misguided, you realize you're so stupid. I don't. I have to rethink how I'm going to express this to you. Well, I some people, like yeah. so some much. people just don't have enough information in their head, and they, you know, the, their their view of the world is very limited. Yeah. I've, I've met very few stupid people. I've met a lot of unin. I shouldn't say I've met very few. I've met a lot. Uninspired people. But much more, more people are uninspired than are stupid. There's definitely stupid people though. There's it must be like explaining stuff to your kid. No, because kids like, get things, man. Uh, kids get things And they don't have any quick. refusal to get anything. No, kids get things and they bring it up the next day. They have questions about it the next day. Like, they're they're pondering an idea. The, the kid, it, it's really? not, it, yeah, they don't have any prior programming that you have to fuck with. The real problem is a person who grew their whole life 
and 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 their mind developed in some ridiculous yeah, way. Yeah, and just got stuck in that yeah, way. Like you know, like you get some poor guy who's a fucking fundamentalist Christian, one of those crazy speaking in tongues guys. Yeah. You know, and at forty years old, he's just starting to branch out on his own and escape his his former. Pa- I mean, what are the guys lost? You know? Yeah, what are his chances? Good luck. Of being able to do it. Good luck. No way. Yeah, you, if you, but it's if you possible. got that guy yes. when he was a baby and, and brought him up in a reasonable household where people were logical and loving and, yeah. and you know and kind of like gave him a, sort of a, a helpful boost, but let him know, hey man, this is a crazy world and nobody understands it. Just stick, stick with, close yeah. to the people you love and uh, enjoy yourself if you can. Yeah, this is what they say with autistic kids: like the earlier you get them, the more normalized you can make them. Really? Yeah, but you got to get them before they set in patterns. There's something to do with uh, with autistic kids and um, you know whatever it is that's causing that, and there has to be. I mean, it's a very unpopular opinion, but there has to be something to do with autistic kids and the next stage of human evolution. What do you mean? It has to be because there's so many people that are savants, so many people that have autism, or so that'll um, lead to a jump in development or something. I, I think wow. what they're experiencing, Maybe. what these people are experiencing, for whatever reason, because of their disease. Um, what you know, and not not all of them can do this, but the few that can, there's so many of them. There's so many super genius autistic kids. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a million videos you can look at them. I'm exaggerating, obviously, yeah. but there's a lot of videos you can go online. And yeah. there's the one kid that we talked about that can look out the window of a plane and draw the exact scene yeah. perfectly. I mean, he can just memorize things. There's there's people that can do very very complex mathematics at a really young age. There's yeah. a, a kid that's uh, he's got something like Asperger's or something, and he's a, this incredible composer. He's composed like five symphonies, and he's like 11 years old or something nuts well, like man, that. This guy Asperger's hangs out at the store, and all he does is make it socially uncomfortable for everyone. <laughs> Well, maybe no one ever put a fucking pair of drumsticks in that kid's hand. Maybe. You know, maybe yeah. you get that motherfucker on a drum skit. But I, 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 when you see something that's hyperhuman, yeah, and it's a, it's also attached to a disease. You know, it's like it's when you ta- develop webbing for in Waterworld, right? So you start between to move your toes forward. and shit, so yeah. moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder, I wonder what it is. But when when you see people capable of incredible feats, and they also have this incredible um, emotional and, and psychological impairment, you know, this yeah. inability to communicate and connect with people, or what, what, or whatever it is that they have, whatever you know, personal kink they have, but to also have this superpower, that's a, it's amazing, man. It's amazing when you watch those shows, like whenever they have like an A and E show or something, when they they feature a bunch of people who can do like ridiculous shit. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's some people that literally are another thing they're like they have a little bit of the new thing in them you know and i wonder how many more of them we have now than just a hundred years ago you know i wonder how many more people are born i mean there's obviously like super geniuses always there's always been yeah. guys like tesla you know and and, and stephen hawking and, and, and dudes of that He's nature still alive yeah it's crazy isn't it yeah he most people would look so years ago yeah most i mean it fucked him up it's yeah. not like it came out feeling fine yeah but like he's still alive. It's yeah, he's alive and, and making computations with his fingers. Oh, you know? How is he doing that? I have no idea. God, I when I heard about Patrice not being able to talk before he went, it was like, yeah. oh, that's it. That's who he is. That's everything I know about him. It revolves around his mouth. Yeah, that's horrible. This guy's figured out a way to do something. Wow, keep it going. To, to keep it going. He, you ever seen his fingers move? He no. moves and he clicks on this thing and he can kind of moves and, and chooses words from the screen it's really amazing wow. it's amazing he invented all that junk for himself i don't know that's a good question i don't know i don't think so oh i don't know still amazing yeah i don't want to i don't want to downplay the, the I, mean, I wonder i wonder what keeps a dude like that moving on because there has to be some form of enjoyment for him as well yeah. i mean he must be enjoying yeah some moment. something about yeah his his science career you it's know one of your clear like biological imperatives is to continue life yeah. So he's like, he has to have some reason to, to do that. Fuck Stay alive. Yeah, he must he must get fulfillment out of it. Finding out new shit or writing a book. Just like anybody. Yeah, what a strange situation, man, to be trapped in, in your body like that and doing computations with your fingers on this thing. Click, <sighs> click, click. Click, 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 click. Whose phone is uh, next to the computer? Because the thing keeps going. Dick, 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 dick. Is that your phone, Brian? Mine's way over here. Mine's over yeah, here. next to your computer, right? Yeah. It's not the computer, though. It has nothing to do with the sound. Man. You sure? Yeah. Well, doesn't sound come through that computer? Yeah, but it's completely muted. It's completely muted. 
I don't think it has to do with the, the mute. I think it's the electricity. Oh, yeah, the electricity so, pops the current. It does that in radio sometimes. Yeah, it's not the matter of the computer being muted. It is because you have the phone next to the you computer. Got the, 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 it's like picking up a signal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. it's not a mute thing. It's not like it's coming through like a like a sound. They say that when you're shooting sometimes. They like turn your phones off. Yeah. On mute, off. We're getting feedback. Yeah, it goes... It'll do it in your car sometimes, too. If you leave it right near your stereo, if you have a hole underneath your stereo for where your CDs go or something... Yeah. leave it there it'll it's real close it'll it'll find through how fucked is that man how fucked yeah. is this some signal that's having a war inside your car they're, they're yeah. battling for dominance and meanwhile these are all bouncing around inside that's the reason they tell you to turn your phones off on the plane is that it i think so because hmm. if everyone's doing that it could really come through makes sense phones make sense you know or what doesn't make sense like ipods that doesn't yeah. make sense that seems silly yeah. but you know what whatever i think it's an it's an exercise in getting people to pay attention to rules it's just like moving your seat yeah, back a lot of people forward. think that it's just to get you ready for the, for the well otherwise how do how do three older women control an entire Man, plane sucks. full of people it's like listen i want to fall asleep now i don't want to turn it back on yeah i'm gonna listen to music the whole time yeah can i just fall asleep with it in can't you're gonna kill us all I got caught it was, once. Was it that easy to kill people? If you, all you had to do is like keep an iPod on, <laughs> and the plane would fall out of the fucking sky. And one of the Holtzman's old jokes. That's what happened to the space shuttle. Space shuttle. Oh, is that what you see? Yeah. A, some Jewish couple in the back had the tray table down for the kosher meal, <laughs> and now uh, you can't take off with the kosher meal tray down. <sighs> yeah. It's a weird thing that you could actually even tell people that if you had your phone on, it could be in danger. Like what? Fix that. Yeah, <laughs> get it done. Fix that. You know those A three eighties. There was an article today. I think I retweeted it. What those uh, A A three eighties are showing cracks on the wings. <laughs> really? Yeah. Those ones were built how long ago? Yeah, I'll tell you right now. Well, there's apparently there's uh, one of them was a Qantas jet and uh, two other ones. Once. Were you? Yeah, with you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were. Australia. Yeah, world's biggest super jumbo jets must be grounded, say engineers, after cracks are found in the wings of three Airbus A three eighties. Cracks are some of the worst things you can find in a way. Um, yeah, I would say. <laughs> Two Singapore Air Super Jumbos and one Qantas. Both airlines admit the cracks, but say the planes are safe. What? <laughs> Pretty much, this is our quote. Oh, Bro, my God. Relax. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. This is amazing. Those are huge fucking planes. When Ari and I flew in it, it's like flying in a giant apartment building. That's weird. We, there was like, we sat in the front, and there was a, a second floor. We could like go upstairs to the bar. So there's actually a bar that you can sit at. Yeah, like there was a, real a bar. bar. There was a bar. That's cool. Yeah, there was a bar, and they had like magazines out and shit, and they would just serve you food or drink, whatever you wanted, the entire time you're there. It was it Weird. was ridiculous. It's the, the 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 thing that you get in first class is like it's like an apartment. It's wow. huge. It's enormous. It spins. Your seat spins like it goes straight if you want to lie down, or you turn it sideways and it can be like a lazy boy. And then you have this big ass flat screen TV in front of you. I mean, it's ri wow. ridiculous. And the food is really fucking good. Huh. It's like most airline food sucks, right. but like like Qantas first class, fucking good meals, man. Huh. It's yummy food, and you're thirty thousand feet above the ocean. Hurling through the sky in a metal tube. It ain't like Southwest. <laughs> the tasting though. menu, the eight course tasting menu. Yeah, that's what they had. It was so it's delicious. Fucking great, man. You get pajamas. Yeah, you get pajamas and toothpaste and shit. I jerked off on the plane. Did you really? Yeah. Hmm. Here's what you got to do because the pod is not completely enclosed. So if you're, if any rich people are listening, you don't turn your body towards um, away. I mean, from the from the opening, mm -hmm. you have to turn towards it because you're always worried like somebody might be right. coming up. So right. turn so you can see him come through the netting. Right, because they could see you down there beating off yeah. if you were beating off. Yeah, to but the I, went, I put my head by where my dick would be, and uh -huh. I looked at the lady behind, me, like who could get an angle at it. Mm. She was asleep. Right. So I was like, okay. How much time do you think you took? Probably, probably it was probably a little longer. Probably like two, two full minutes. Two full minutes. Yeah. Were you furious or were you just no, no? That's gentle? why I was like, stop, and then I was like, stop, gentle. calming, stop. Yeah, real gentle, but you base up on the left hand and jerk it on the, with the right. That's what you were doing? Yeah, because I was on the right side of the plane. That's Obviously, probably good for your core as well. Yeah. Support yourself in that way? Well, just so you don't yeah, fall over. And then would you shoot it into your pajama tops? No. Uh, I shot it into the, um, the you know, those slipper socks they give you? Yeah. I turned one of those inside out and shot it into it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 
I was forced like a peasant to use my regular socks. For the I was on a plane once with Melanie Griffith, and we were flying to England. She was sitting right in front of me, and there was a dude who was right beside her. And you know how when planes uh, in the first class cabins that their their seats don't line up, like everyone's not head to toe. They're oh, yeah. kind of staggered because they're these big ass pods. Yeah. Well, the way it was staggered was Melanie Griffith head lined up directly with this fat guy's ass <laughs> it was right across the aisle no more than a couple feet away her head directly lined up with his ass and he unloaded this dude unloaded <laughs> in the middle of the flight one of the most horrific tate like farts our friend tate fletcher is known for having the most ferocious farts because Tate's a big giant dude and he takes a lot of protein powder and when you eat a lot of protein like your body like gets not, rid of it gets rid of a lot of that process that extra <laughs> shit well and it turns into farts <laughs> and this dude just I mean I don't know what he ate but he was a big guy was and a, by yeah. the way I don't even know if it was his fart because it's not like I have a fucking locator but if you're on a plane and there's a fart and you see a fat guy that guy gets blamed he blamed he gets blamed and his ass is lined up yeah it's more than like black kids get blamed for stolen things Things. Fat people get blamed for farts on planes, always. Like that's like the first person you look to. Like fuck yeah, it was him. And the way it lined up was just his ass was just right across from her face. It was horrific, man. I mean, it was a it was a nightmare fart. And I mean, what are the odds in life that you would ever have your face or Melanie Griffith's face that close to your ass that you could <laughs> unload on her face like that? And you were like, you know, I think I should fart on her face. I talked about it on stage that night in England, you know, because it was so ridiculous. Because I mean, I would just—it was just such a preposterous lineup. But I, I could never turn it into a bit. But it was really hilarious at the time. I just—I couldn't imagine. Well, and I was thinking, Melanie what Griffith if this guy like had planned this out? What if he like came to Melanie Griffith's agent and he said, "Listen, uh, I'd be willing to pay a million dollars to fart in Mrs. Griffith's face." <laughs> and like, you're out of your fucking mind. You know, we I'll can't bring that offer. offer to her. Just bring it to her, man. And Let they, her they, they wouldn't. They, they, then the agent said, "Listen." I think we can work something out. I've, I've been 10. looking at how these planes line up, and this is what I want to show you. Look at this. Here's your seat. Here's Melanie Griffin's seat. Look where your ass would be. Look, we, we got it. I think we got it. I think we got it. Melanie doesn't even have to know. Isn't that a little unethical, it's keeping the money from Melanie? I mean, that's part of my thrill. Well, you know, I'll just slip it into her bank account. Melanie doesn't have to know. <laughs> just a little extra money in her bank account. This <laughs> guy just opened his ass on Melanie's head. <laughs> it was Violent, but deadly. hot. It was a hot fart for sure. There was some heat to it. That was one where you might not have known how bad it was before you let it go, but once you let it go, you realized how atrocious, <laughs> what a terrible person you are. How you should be despised. Think about all the shit particles from your ass that people have been forced to acknowledge in their nostrils. <laughs> Word? Word. Are we have one of those crazy pods to Brazil? I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like. Oh. Ari's going to Brazil with me. We're going to party. That We're going to party cool. in Rio. Yeah. Apparently, it's the nuttiest crowd for MMA ever. Like, you've never seen a more enthusiastic Really? And they're all crowd. Brazilian on the card. A lot of Brazilians in the card. And uh, good ones. Husamar Paul Jarez is fighting. That's a fucking great fight, man. That's going to be interesting. And like, it must go nuts for it. Aldo fighting Chad Mendes, man. I wouldn't want to be Chad Mendes in Brazil. Oh. Jesus Christ. Aldo Aldo and Anderson. You they're know, like heroes. They're, they're, they're right? heroes. They're heroes. Well, they're two of three. I mean, it's really, there's no country like Brazil, man, where there's three UFC champions. I mean, there's, there's only, how many weight classes now? There's 35, 45, 55, 70, 85, 205, and heavyweight. So there's seven, seven weight classes, and three of them are dominated by Brazilians. Wow. That's amazing. They don't have that in Americans. What's that? They don't have as many Americans. No, George St. Pierre is 170, but then um, Mick Diaz and Carlos Conde, two Americans, are going to be fighting for the interim belt. Wow, wow. So that's going to be, Why? Oh, interim belt. Well, it means a lot because George is out for a long time. How long is he out? He's knees blown. He had to get surgery. Oh. He had to get a, so if he never a patella back, tendon a graft. It's a big surgery. The patella tendon graft is a really difficult one. The way they do that, it's a long road to recovery. You have to, they take a chunk of bone out of your, your uh, kneecap and a chunk of bone out of your shin and they slice the patella tendon. Oh. They take a piece of it off and they use that piece to recreate the ACL, the arterio anterior cruciate ligament that's really? inside the middle of the knee, the stabilizing ligament. So then they have to screw that in place. They have to drill holes, and then they have to take the little piece of bone they took from your kneecap and stuff it into your bone, stuff it into your, you know, your, your humerus. Is that what it is? 
what's it? Femur? Thigh, femur? Femur. Stuff it into your femur. And then they stuff it into the lower one, too, whatever your shin bone Jesus. is. Yeah, it's gnarly shit. So the he's out for a long time. For forever, whatever you had. Yeah, like you were jacked. Well, that, that is actually a, a technique that they've been using for a long time. And how that long? The patella tendon graft. The, more, than, more than 20 years. Okay. Because I had it done, a patella tendon graft done in the 90s. I had it done, I believe it was 93. I had it done. Um, but now they uh, more more likely are use um, uh, a graft from a dead person. I have in my right knee oh, nice. a cadaver graft. Really? Yeah, they use um, the Achilles Sean tendon. Sean Ross getting two new knees. Is he really? Two new plastic knees. Artificial knees. He has wow. no cartilage in his knees, neither oh, one of his knees, God. zero. Our friend Sean Rouse has a crazy form of arthritis. It's like super aggressive arthritis. He's so happy now. I'm, I'm sure so excited. he's going to be able to walk Lieberman got him bumped up. Yeah? Yeah. Avi Lieberman I was like, up. I know a guy who works at whatever. So what are they going to, you know how they do that, man? They have to cut your knee off. Yeah, he's got pretty much nothing anymore. You ever see how they do hip replacements? No. It's gnarly, dude. They cut your... They, they take the socket out. They cut it off. They saw it off. And they put a new socket in there and drive it into your fucking bone. Uh, they screw this bolt into your bone. And now you have this new ball and socket set up in your hip. That's probably 100 times better than the original. Yeah. yeah. Well... <laughs> I want to get everything so, replaced. Sort of, no. Because it's like it's also an alien piece. Sean it's said the only really problem is they said it will, it will um, start to dissolve after about 15 15 years, mm. which is totally fine for him. But he goes, dissolve to where? Just into my body? Whoa. After 15 years? Yeah. And so then they go back and replace it? Oh, yeah. 15 years from now, they probably have amazing ones. Maybe, probably, yeah. Yeah, they'll probably have one that's better than the human knee. A hologram you know? knee. I mean, when you would think they would, with lightweight materials yeah. and if they could figure out something yeah, that's way better. biocompatible. Yeah. Someone's going to start having the surgeries just because, like, I don't need it, but fuck it. Well, have you it's seen stronger. that dude who uh, he's got no legs? He lost his legs oh, and he's no competing legs. in races with really? uh, these artificial legs. He lost his legs below the knee. Oh. And so they, they put these. Oh, yeah, he's got like these spring things? Yeah, these crazy fucking things. Yeah, I wouldn't want to race against that guy. And he, it actually, he's like kicking ass with these things, man. He could run fast. And some people are actually saying, like, this is an unfair advantage. Like, yeah. what? You can't say that, man. A dude gets his legs cut off. No, but he he's got, 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 spring spring he got springs on his yeah. legs. No, but like, still. <laughs> you got to like jump a jack with that flash shit. running down the Unless street. he's breaking world records, you got to deal with that shit. As long as he gets close, it's okay. Yeah. Unless he's what breaking. What if he shatters world records? That would be incredible. The, the, Can you imagine if guys started getting their legs cut off so that they could run yeah. as fast as him and getting these artificial feet screwed on? Somebody would make these skates, and what, what they would do is, in the speed skates, they would come slightly apart from the skate as you were stepping up. So they would give you an extra split second of ice time if it's touching the ice, the blade would get like slowly removed from your shoe. Wow. So it would stay in the ice a little longer. And all those, like, I, think it was, I think it was Swiss. I don't know. They were all fucking shattering records. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Just from doing that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's clever little monkeys. Yeah. Clever little monkeys figure that out. Remember this uh, last past uh, Olympics where the dude died on the uh, bobsled? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot Ooh, about that. That gosh. was gnarly, man. That's why I'm a huge proponent of everyone should have to wear um, helmet cams. Yeah. So everyone. You can see what that ride would be like We need to hand. know that that's possible. Yeah. We need to know that that's possible. You know, that's that's not something you should keep from people. Uh, people that are considering being a, a bobsled person, you could die from this. Yeah, yeah. And they were saying that everyone was saying how it was way too fast, it was running way too fast. <sighs> well, look, you look at what they're doing, man. God, I they're mean, going those, so fast. They're flying in those fucking things, and I guess somehow or another you're steering with your weight, correct? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, you must be doing something. Yeah, you have to I mean, hit the turns, right? The yeah, yeah, lean. right. Is that what it is? Yeah, Do I you think do it's it? leaning. So, yeah. God damn. There was a dude who was a fighter. He fought uh, Todd Hayes. He fought in uh, Valley Tudo in Japan. And uh, he was supposed to fight Hicks and Gracie, but he blew his shoulder out in the fight before that he won. And um, he uh, quit fighting and to become a bobsled guy. Really? Yeah, that was Richard his... Walker did bobsledding for a while. Did he? Yeah, totally I think makes he sense. won gold. Jesus then they started, they started rethinking it. They were like, oh, we don't need bobsledders. We need fucking track people. We need people that are fucking fast and strong to push the bases. Herschel Walker made them win the gold. Are you sure I about think that? So I think he won something. Probably not the gold. That sounds Herschel ridiculous. Walker but is I a bad motherfucker, <laughs> dude. He you made know, the Cowboys. He's like forty-seven or forty-eight years old now, and he's still fighting MMA. And he fought. A, he fought in Strike Force twice, and uh, at least twice in one. Dude, he's fucking shredded. He's ridiculously shredded. Really? Oh my god. He's forty-eight years old, and he apparently has like superhuman discipline. 
Yeah, he's he like was always one of those the way guys. He, out. he never lifted weights. He, he put well. He says minutes. that, but then other dudes say that he has lifted weights. I think he, he started also after has. It. Well, no, he also has a multiple personality disorder. Oh yeah. So he could be saying that oh, he's yeah. not lifting weights, and he's telling the truth because <sighs> he's not lifting weights. But Clyde is, wow. and Clyde's the one that has the past to twenty four hour fitness. Gosh. <laughs> but he, he's like, no, I haven't really yeah. worked that all day. I think Naturally, I'm pretty so. sure. I, I don't want to talk out of school, but I'm pretty sure I read on his website <laughs> cool. that he has trauma related multiple personality disorder from football yeah and uh i read that and i was like wow well why is this guy fighting in mma then you know Mm -hmm. that seems crazy that he would go from that to fighting in mma but the fights that he's had dude he's just mauled people he's such a fucking super athlete if herschel walker was around if mma was around when herschel walker was young yeah when he was yeah if if he had decided to do that He's there's every now and then there's dudes that can just throw people around. They just he they're was just so dominant Uber. for a little while. The Vikings pretty much traded their whole team for him. <laughs> it was like everybody they had good and draft picks for the next five years. Wow, they're like we want him that bad. Well, yeah, that's a super athlete, man. It made the Cowboys for so long. Yeah. Did you hear Mayweather uh, wants to fight pa- Pac Man now? Yeah, because he's going to jail. Oh, is that why? Yeah, the judge, the it. judge will let him uh, postpone his jail time until June. So if he can get Pacquiao to fight him in May, he'll make a shitload of money and then go to jail for ninety days. So since the judge has allowed him to postpone it, he's like, all right, fuck it, let's yeah, go. Let's start let's the day after a fight. Let's uh, go. So it's right going to be a lame fight, probably. No, no it will not be a lame fight. <laughs> Pacquiao <laughs> won't is make a it lame. Pacquiao is a killer. <laughs> but I think that um, uh, a lot of people feel that Pacquiao was uh, exposed a little bit by. Marquez, the Juan Manuel Marquez fight that they've had three fights now, and that uh, you know Marquez felt like he won two of those, and uh, you know it was not nearly the dominant victory that Pacquiao had hoped for. So a lot of people, I think, are thinking that if Floyd Mayweather was scared of him before, now he's like relaxed. Now he saw the way Marquez uh, like, dealt oh, maybe him. A shot. It yeah, because a he he boxed the shit out of Marquez when they fought. He, Floyd didn't even take any damage. Floyd Mayweather is just technically. And strategically on another level. The the thing about Pacquiao is Pacquiao is he's a is a beast. He's got crazy power in his hands, ridiculous speed, and he can catch anybody. And if he if he tees off on Floyd and he gets a good rhythm and starts coming at him with those wild combinations, anything can happen. But Floyd doesn't feel like he could do that. Floyd thinks he could stop him now. Who's the money on? I don't know. If I had a gamble, I'd bet Pacquiao. It's hard to bet against Pacquiao because against Pacquiao's been fighting. Wins. He's been fighting big guys too. Like when he fought, um, you know, when when he fought, um, what the fuck's his name, Margarito. He beat the shit out of Margarito, and Margarito was way bigger than him. And Margarito's a dangerous guy, and he fucked Margarito up. You know, I mean, he broke his eye socket. He broke his orbital. <sighs> he made him. They ha- he has a, an artificial lens in his eye now. Really, Margarito does because of that fight. Yeah, and, and Pacquiao was. 15, 16 pounds lighter than him, easily. Maybe even more. It might have been 18 pounds during fight time. Because mm. they weigh him on HBO, they weigh him the day of the fight, too. And they see how much a guy's rehydrated, and they show you that statistic, which I think is brilliant. The UFC should probably incorporate something like that, too. But I don't think they want to admit yeah, how, much <laughs> how much Yeah, some guys are cutting. Like guys like Anthony Johnson. Yeah, they cut a shit ton. Anthony Johnson's fighting Vitor Belfort this weekend in Brazil. Oh, that would be cool. That's going to be fucking crazy. And he's fighting at 185 for the first time, too, which for Anthony is the, the right move. If you've never seen Anthony Johnson before, he's another he's specimen. Specimen. Dude's a specimen. And he's a big 170, like the biggest possible. And he would, I would see him walking around like in between fights, and he was well over 200 pounds. He was enormous. He looked like a heavyweight. You know, and then he would drop. He said at one point in time he cut sixty pounds to and make to make one seventy. A long time. I mean, I'm sure he did it over a, a long camp. But you know, starved 60 himself. Pounds. Sixty. That's he was up Jay to like two thirty. Yeah, success stories. Over I know a year. exactly. Meanwhile, with him, it was mostly muscle. You know, he's mostly making his body eat itself. You know, dehydrating <laughs> and eat itself. I mean, he's losing a little bit of fat, but he's not a fat guy. He doesn't get fat. Yeah, he's just an athlete. Well, it's fucking brutal, man. It's like th- th- there's a point of diminishing returns, and I, I think he'd already hit that. Fight. Let him break camp even. Why? Can't do that because of uh, brain damage. That's when it's mo- people are most susceptible to brain damage. Yeah, but then you won't cut. You'll just but they your would. Weight. They would. They would cut oh, anyway. Really? Yeah, they cut anyway. They always do. Oh. They used to have uh, weight. They used to have it in boxing. They used to have the day of. But more people die of brain injuries because of uh, dehydration. What? What? Have what it, see, how about have it after the fight? I don't think in the old Wait, days the box. Too late. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's ridiculous. You lose a lot of weight during a fight. Um, I don't think a lot of people were hip to uh, IVs back in the day either. So when they to would lose weight, off. when they would lose weight, no, no, IVs uh, to, uh, to uh, replenish, to okay. put your uh, liquids back in. That's the best way All to do it. All those guys look so weak when they're at the weigh-ins. They look like death. Yeah, I've seen guys look terrified. Stink. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Breath is horrible. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, stomach acid coming out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't eat for. Yeah. You know, they don't eat for a long time before they get up there. A lot Ooh. of the guys, except the heavyweights. Heavyweights. I don't care. Oh, I, I love them. Beautiful. They're wearing their jeans. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. It's about the same. But there's a few guys that have had to cut weight at heavyweight. Tim Sylvia had to cut weight once. He, he weighed in over. I remember that. He Brock. was over 265. Brock's always made the weight. He cuts to that, right? Yeah, he cuts to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if, he, if he wanted to, he could get to about 300 pounds if he wanted to, I'm sure. He started packing on the creatine, doing power lifting and shit like that, mm. and just eating all day. But I don't think he can eat all day now because of that uh, the stomach thing. That's I think his, his diet has got to be very different. Time catches everyone. But that's not just time, dude. He had diverticulitis. You could die from that shit, man. People die. That's amazing. I never even heard of that before he got it. I never heard of it. They should rename it fucking Brock Lesnar's disease. <laughs> the same way they did with Lou Gehrig. Out of all the times that you and I have been to Fogo de Chao, all of those Brazilian steakhouses, yeah. who would have ever thought that someone could die from eating too much meat? That's we, Would you have ever thought of that? No. We've been going to those places for a decade. Yeah. Are you going to go to the one in Brazil? Fuck yeah. Of course You know, are. the ones in Brazil are even better because they serve like chicken hearts and stuff that people Yay. in America are kind of scared that. of. That shit's delicious, dude. When we went to one in Sao Paulo, it was one of the best ones I've ever been to ever. Really? And they just kept giving us these chicken hearts. I was like, dude, keep coming with them chicken they hearts. Woo! It's like salted. They, they know how they to serve cook, in Israel, dude. They grill in Israel. This is a wild culture, man. It's a beautiful culture. The, the culture of Brazil is so fun. You know, meat and fighting, and <laughs> yeah. the girls are beautiful, and they're living on the beach. I mean, Brazil it's like, ass. And everybody's doing pre, pre, uh, playing jiu-jitsu. I mean, it's like, wow, what a, what a crazy culture, man. And soccer and everything, you know, and their yeah. their their economy has changed in a in a big way over the last few years. Apparently, they found oil off the shore, and their really? economy's That's booming. Another, yeah, you know, they're one of tropic. the leaders, like the, <laughs> the leaders of the world in AIDS research and and uh, and um, education. Really? Yeah, it's a lot of places um, in Rio. Also, I've heard uh, where people go to get uh, good but cheap plastic surgery. I can see that? Yeah, like uh, girls in Hollywood that can't afford going to doctors here. Yeah, you can fly to Brazil. And get your shit done get there. Jobs all the time and stuff. I guess. Yeah. And then you know, then you just chill out in Rio. Yeah. Chill out on the beach while your tits heal. Mm. And get on a plane, head home. Holla! <laughs> Look, I went on vacation, came back with tits. <laughs> Boobies. I'm excited. It's yeah, it should be fun. It's a whole other culture. Yeah, just uh, don't go to the favelas looking for heroin. <laughs> Keep it together and don't get bit by a Brazilian watering spider. There's a Brazilian wandering what? spider that kills you, uh, and one of the things that happens is um, the people that survive, first of all, you'll you have a 24-hour raging death hard-on. Really? Yes. Yeah. It, the way it affects your body, it apparently <laughs> blasts your levels of nitric, acid, n- uh, nitric oxide, yeah. which is uh, the same That's thing, that the, the same effect that Viagra has. Okay. Like, and what this stuff does is just makes your dick hard <laughs> as, as fucking cold steel to the point where it's painful, where wow. your dick is dying. Uh-huh. It's expanded so hard that it's tearing. Literally, the cells are ripping apart from wow. each other. They're, it's getting so big and so hard that the cells are separating from each other tearing in agony and screaming pain Uh, and this is happening to all your muscles not just your uh, cock but every muscle in your body is just in mad agony and if you survive and most people don't but if you survive you'll be fucked you'll be dead you might as well be dead your your dick won't work anymore it's done forever Uh your body's gonna be a wreck you're gonna be physically a wreck all your muscles are gonna be so wait do they do they once you get bit what happens to you can you Go to the doctor immediately, or no? How, over how you're much fucked. Period you're of time? fucked. Call Joey. It's almost you almost it out. immediately. Almost immediately, uh-huh. you're fucked. There's no, I don't. I don't know if they have. Uh, and what know. would you say percentage wise? Are you worried about the spider? Me, I'm not going to the jungle. Oh, it's in the jungle. <laughs> I'm 100 percent not worried. Doesn't I hope it's out. only in the jungle. Shit, I'm pretty sure it's only in the jungle. Yeah. But if I, I'm going to put myself in a fucking boy in the plastic bubble suit, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to dress up like Aquaman. I don't know. I, I, I'm not really worried about it. Are but, hotels but normal it is a, out yeah. down there? Sure. Like in Brazil? Yeah, beautiful hotels. They're pretty much everywhere. Yeah. They ever have tourists from other places. Like the nice hotels are nice everywhere. Yeah, in any city in the world, you know, that's a real city, mm-hmm. you're going to have some nice places to stay. Even in, you know, I mean, I've seen like Kuwait. Kuwait has beautiful, people. beautiful hotels. And, you know, right. it's kind of crazy. You would think someone just went to war with Iraq just a few years ago. It'd probably be a mess right now, right? No, right. not really. Yeah. Go there. It's beautiful. I had a crazy dream. Where I, was, I quit pot and my dreams went nuts. You tell me, tell us about that. Because how long did you quit it for? 13 days. Wow. But I'm an everyday, multiple times a day smoker. Um, I've, I heard that you get dreams and nightmares after three days. Nightmares? Yeah. So I was trying to put three days in. 
to go, try to get the dreams and nightmares. Yeah, to see what would happen if you quit. But it took me it took me two years. To we need to give you days. some alpha brain. I bet alpha brain would give you some ridiculous. Yeah, it's dreams. a lot of Twitter people kept saying like, "Oh, it must be the alpha brain or whatever." It, it was. gives you really vivid dreams. We don't. It's the combination of the, all the the nootropics and the B six and because B six on its own apparently can do that. And a lot of the nootropics on their own can give you some weird dream effects. But apparently, yeah. all of them together with the B six really kicks. It was every it's night except after I did mushrooms. Every night. Yeah, I would get the crazy like plot driven dreams, like long and super really? clear. Like I remember them for way longer. Whoa. And one really? of them was I was dropped in the jungle in Brazil and there was all these like dangerous predators. But there's also tons of mushroom spores. So we would like wow. trip out. Dude, I think it's good to stop smoking pot for a little bit. I think it's good to stop tolerance, doing everything. Tolerance break. I take meat breaks. I meat take break. meat breaks where I only eat like vegetables for like a couple Clear of days. Clear out a little bit. Just for the back. fuck of it. I just yeah. do it if I feel like doing it. Like sometimes like there's a, a, a good vegan restaurant near here. And yeah. every now and then I'll just have this like real hankering for some like real vegetable heavy food. You know? Quinoa. Sounds good. What are you saying? What are you quinoa. Doing? Quinoa. What is that? Vegan food. Quinoa. Quinoa? Oh, quinoa. Quinoa. That, oh. That's that um that grain, that yeah. heavy protein grain. I got the Whole Foods... um. Salad bar. They got a bunch of different types of quinoas. Yeah. It's the, it's the only plant, apparently, that has all the amino acids that um, meat has. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think soy also. I don't think so. I don't think soy has everything. Really? Yeah, and soy makes you grow tits. Yeah, fuck soy. Soy I made Brian cry. Beans. Yeah, I like almond. Almond um, milk is great for you. I love yeah. that. I drink that shit every day. That's that's pretty much substituted my mo, most of my dairy. Almond, Unless yeah, I'm too. having cookies. It's just a protein. I'm having it's cookies. Protein it's itself. really easy to make by yourself. Uh, almond also, milk? Yeah, almond milk. You can make because uh, you have the Vitamix. It's really cool for that. You really? Just, grill, yeah, just do it. With, mix it with water. But there's a lot of good recipes online to make like. Do you make it? Have you made one? Uh, I tried it once and it worked. So. so do you have to soak the almonds first? Is that how you yeah, do it? Yeah, soak it overnight for 24 hours and then mix it up. And, and there's something else I did to it. You're just Buying almond milk. Uh, yeah, why would I do that? Yeah, so I could just I go to the store and buy it. Just have it done for you. Well, yeah. I'm just saying if you're if, if you're, you're like crazy, your own butter, if you're really crazy. Like feel like going old school. Yeah, make your own butter. Have you ever tried to make your own butter? No, I, I made did my, make my own, own whipped cream. I did make my own pickles. You did. Yeah. So but why so why is it better. preposterous they're to so make your own better. butter? You can't get that kind of recipe. Oh, the pickle recipe? Yeah. There was a place when we were filming that Zookeeper in Boston. I wish I remember their name because yeah. I would give them a shout out. There was a fucking cart that they had where it was all pickles and different flavored pickles. Nice. And oh. some of them were really spicy yeah. and some of them were really crisp and green. And some of them were like the more sour, like darker or uh, lighter colored green ones. Yeah. And they just had every kind of pickle and they were fucking deadly. And I was like, Jesus oh, yeah. Christ, do you guys ship these pickles? I'm like, I got to get these fucking pickles. They were amazing. I'll bring you some of my you, father made. Oh, I'll yeah? To Brazil. I'll bring you some to the airport. Oh, you know, the best is nice. a Bloody Mary with pickled asparagus and green beans in it. Pickled asparagus. What do they pickle it with? Same, 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 same stuff, thing. Same yeah. thing, Brian. You use once you have once you've already made the brine, you can use that stuff. To oh, so you just things. stick something else in there, huh? Pickled carrots and like green cucumbers. Pickled green tomatoes cucumbers are good. You ever had that? Pickled green cucumbers? green cucumbers. Those pickled green cucumbers. I mean, not, not cucumbers. Uh, tomatoes, tomatoes rather. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are delicious. They hold it really well. Yeah, right. They're yeah, crisp. Also, they're really sh you're sharp, so you can like cut them with a knife. Yeah, Juice figured out a lot of cool shit. <laughs> Ju Juice figured out pastrami. You got to take off your fucking hat to pastrami, it's man. Pastrami, we did that well. It's pastrami is like one of the best for sandwiches. Can you get a more delicious meat for sandwiches? It's fatty, and they so slice good. it real thin. It goes and the then mustard, with the Rubens, mustard. when they put the fucking sauerkraut on that yeah. bitch, and then the, the, the dressing. You guys want to go to Jerry's Deli and eat right now? That was the yeah. hardest thing. Yeah, let's get high, that. though. That was the hardest thing when I took my pot, pot vacation. Hmm. There was one time I got green blats on my home. I got oh. that pastrami, half pastrami, half chopped liver. And I was like, I should be smoking a joint right now. Yep. This is how this should go. That would definitely enhance the food. People don't realize how much it does enhance. How far is Jerry's Deli? Not far at all. Real close. Let's do that. Let's, Let's do that shit. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, Cantor's is the best. If you want to really Cantor's get down really and dirty good. with your pastrami, that's the best pastrami in L.A. Cantor's is, that's the oldest school, old school place in L.A. How long has that deli been there? Canners, a yeah. long time. That's is exactly the same. Something. Yeah, if you go into that place, that's exactly the same as it was in like the nineteen seventies. All those old pictures. Yeah, like from there. Yeah, it's a, that's it's a, way older than that. Yeah, way older than that. But I'm saying I don't think they've done any renovations mm -hmm. since the seventies, or yeah. maybe it might even be the fifties. Who the so fuck if you're knows? Plate of pickles when you sit down. The place is good. awesome. And the food is super legit, especially the pastrami and the white fish, the smoked white fish. God damn, I'm getting hungry, bitches. <laughs> so um, to wrap things up, 
Can I Great. say this before we go? Can you tell people? You can say got, whatever you want. I got Minneapolis the 25th or the That's 29th. That's what I was going to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have another whiskey. Throw the battleship around. Yeah. And then I think me and Kreischer are, are going to do a show with Russell in in Toronto. Oh, really? I think, yeah, they're working on it, but they have like a festival there. Oh, Russell's a giant. Yeah, in February. Toronto. He's fucking That's where he's huge from, I guess. There, dude. Yeah. yeah, Russell fucking dominates up there. What a nice guy Russell Peters is. If you don't, cool. you know, if you don't know Russell Peters, what, what a fucking great guy he is. He's so friendly, you yeah. know? Yeah. He's like such an easy, down to earth guy. Yeah. No like airs about him, no bullshit. Yeah, I always forget that he's like. Huge superstar. Yeah, I always forget that. Like, we were talking with him and Fahim, we we're talking at the improv. He's like, I'm going to go on. And it's like, well, you can't just go, oh yeah, oh yeah, you can't just go on. I forgot who you are. <laughs> just a regular dude. Yeah. Well, what's really crazy is how uh, he's uh, huge in other countries. In the UK, he sold out the O2 Arena like two nights in a row. In Canada, that's that insane. Big. Two nights in a row. Jesus. That's insane. How the O2 Arena, Arena is where we do the UFC. It's huge. I don't know how many it is. It's more than 15,000. like that. I don't know. It's more than 15,000, though. Jesus. It's fucking gigantic, man. I can't Jesus. even imagine. I'm doing the Chicago Theater. It's like 3,000. Really? Yeah, it's, that's pretty I did big. I 3,000 over the summer. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, three thousand so nuts. People, it's a lot of people laughing. Back. When the the laughs come in, it's a boom. It's like wow. It's not. It's it's a weird thing, man. When you go when you whenever you go over five hundred, like the laughs are bigger, but the connection's different. It's like it's hard to like keep that real intimate connection with three thousand. I have to people. tell myself this last time I was able to get a little better because I was like slow between jokes. Pause mm -hmm. a lot longer, and but usually it's like it takes me ten minutes to like remember that. Do you feel like it goes smoother when you pause longer? Like, what yeah. is it? It allows them time to take it in. You it's need just, it's more time because room. there's more people. Yeah, really? it's just bigger. Mm. And they all like when you're bouncing off the wall, like the belly room, the laughs. It's like mm -hmm. eighty people in those small, small rooms of that place in Boston, that upstairs, my Chinese mm -hmm. place. It was like they all hear each other and react immediately. Well, also, I think that the 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 room's acoustics are different. Maybe. The, the way you process sound is different when there's so much loudness around you with laughter, and yeah. then this this is projected from speakers that are far away. I mean, it, that's a it's it's a tricky thing. And right? you can't really see the guy really well, so you can't get the facial expressions. And so you, the un, the little non written cues, so like it's time to laugh. Yeah, that's when comedy gets weird when you have like giant screens where your Man. face is on these giant screens. Man. You'd have to. You can't. Otherwise, yeah. no one could see you if, if you do something that big. Well, Dane would do those big yeah, places like that, but he would do them in the round. He would do them in the round. So they'd have to have somebody on the screen. They'd have to. Have yeah, you somebody. have to because it's, you, otherwise you're looking at his ass, you know, which some girls would love. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Don't God. get me started. He hasn't done comedy in like a year. Yeah, it's very weird. I see him. Yeah. At, uh, he said he was going to do an Ice House Chronicles uh, soon. He yeah. Come do the show. Maybe. Maybe he will. Show show. Maybe he'll just do the podcast part, though. Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, he hasn't done comedy. I, I don't know. Some people should just fucking get tired of it, I asked him my show, and he's like, keep asking me, but no, I'm not back yet. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. He's going to take more than a year off. I wonder what he's doing. You know what? Some people are just not happy with what they're doing. This is yeah. what I heard, that it was like... Slaying pussy. I've sold out like 15,000 seaters, whatever. It's like... I'm like that's what that's the top of what you're supposed to do, and I was like, where am I supposed to go? Just keep doing that. There's nowhere else to go or you know strive hmm. for. Maybe that could be it. Or he's just acting. You know? Like we all strive to get big, bigger followings and better. It's like I got it. I've got the biggest following I can get. Well, his following definitely dropped off, though. I know I talked to people that worked in places that where he was at, where he had been there, you know, a couple of years before and sold fifteen thousand seats, and then he came yeah. back and sold like seven. Yeah. It wasn't. I mean, it was still huge, but it wasn't. It wasn't what it was yeah. at the peak of his popularity. And and I don't. Do I think it's or also or a lot of negativity. He, yeah. he dealt with a lot of people that were uh, not just warranted, but even unwarranted negativity. There's a lot yeah. of people that hated that guy yeah you know there was there was warranted stuff like the plagiarism stuff that was you know it was kind of questionable I, mean, well, I shouldn't say questionable but it was uh he stopped yeah he probably just stopped. he stopped yeah he, he stopped doing that for sure but it was also i mean the way it all went down it was, it was you know it was very unfortunate for him it, it was it looked horrible yeah you know when when people were playing the louis ck bits next to his bits it just became Did you ever watch him on louis show Y that, yes. That, that scene. Yeah, I didn't. I thought that was weird. You know, I think uh, I, li I like the way Louis like kind of like let him win because that's uh, that's that's in line with how Louis would deal with the situation. It made sense to me. Like, oh yeah, this, of course, this is how Louis did it. You know, Louis's a nice guy. You know, and he sort of felt bad that everybody was going after Dane, but you know, mm. 
it was what it was, you know? It's weird. It's just hard for a guy to recover from something like that, you know. When when you get uh, when you get a label put on you, and you get uh, a lot of people that just decide to hate you, you know. I mean, Zach Galifianakis, Galifianakis. Yeah. He had a yeah. um, he had a. Remember, he used to people do. People hate him. Remember, he used to do a bit where what? he would uh, pull out posters uh -huh. at the end and he write things on them. Yeah. And one of them was "Kill Dane Cook." Uh huh. Got a huge laugh. Yeah. You know, it's like. It was like a, it's all sort of agree we can make this joke. Yeah, it was all, he He became that guy. Like, even though a, a lot of people loved him, he became the guy that a lot of people fucking hated. Yeah, and you were clear, to, yeah. you were in the clear to be able to say whatever you wanted. Negative. And if you're not doing stand-up, you're really not in that world anymore. You're not attached to those people anymore. You're not feeling their hate anymore. You're not, you know, like, whatever. Now you don't, now you have no effect on me. You know, now you have no effect on me. I'm not doing stand up right now. You have no, no effect on me. I guess. Yeah, I mean, you. If you're tired of people, just the snarky critic who uh, is, you know, just on instinct and you know, on um, just uh, by default, they're cunty. You know, there's a lot of people yeah. like that. But by default, looking for something shitty to say. And I when you got a target like Kim Kardashian yeah. or Dane Cook, when he was, you know, when people were shitting on him or anybody who's in the news that you is like a free shot. Yeah, then you what? know, you automatically go after them. Yeah, there's that's going to be a lot of people that go Tom after Arnold's them. Tom Arnold's and the whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be, like, yeah, Justin Bieber. Yeah. So he's going to so be not someone. Doing comedy would would help that. Yeah, because you're not connected to them anymore. You're not doing anything. I mean, he's got enough money. I'm sure that he could just kick back and relax for could. a few years. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not, it doesn't seem time. like a nutty spender. So if he can just kick back and relax for a few years, and maybe while he's doing that, he's writing some stuff that he really it's likes. Too. It's, it well, he filmed three movies last year, so that could also be why he took a year off. Yeah, that could be too. I know like uh, what uh, Beck did an album, a really great album called Sea Change, and mm -hmm. it's all about his relationship with an owner-writer. Whoa. Yeah, and he said, though, he was like, I couldn't write it for like two years up until we, after we broke up for like a couple years, and then I was able to like process my feelings about it and then write this amazing you know, work. Hmm. How's Winona feel about it? I don't know. They tried to reach her, but she was too busy stealing shit. It's a really great album. It's a good breakup album. He's a uh, Scientologist, isn't he? Heck yeah. yeah. I went to a Scientology show of his once. Really? Yeah. What was that? It was a knitting factory, but it was it was to raise fundraiser for Scientology, and my Scientologist friend got me in. Wow. You have a Scientologist friend? Bobby used to have a girlfriend who was Scientologist. Okay, so you're sitting there with uh, all you Scientologists and you? And Bobby. Wow. And I, he must have been there, too. Hmm. Unless he wasn't available that day. And so Beck is doing a uh, show and going like, fucking Scientology rules. No, he didn't really talk and about it. And everybody goes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you see a car accident, you know that you have to pull over because <laughs> you're a Scientologist one. and you're the only one that's going to know what only to do. The only one that can help. I just think it'd be too bad if you, like Dane Cook, is a, the way he talks about comedy and the way he, like, he's been 20 years in the game, like to lose a prof, like a professional. Mm -hmm. Man, it's too bad. Some well, new guy doesn't well who knows if things. he's losing it? Maybe he's just taking a year off. You know, oh, maybe fine. he's just no. Seriously, he filmed three movies. Himself. He was on a TV show. I mean, I know, he but was, he was filming busy. movies before. And he never took time off. Yeah, nobody. There's a, a big difference off. between doing all week. these movies and yeah, and taking time off a of stand up. Not, not coming up with a new album. Not yeah. doing any stand up in L. A. Yeah, guys take two weeks off and it's a big deal. <sighs> you know, two weeks is kind of shaky. You come back, you're a little, you know. You got to do like one set a week. I had to call in today. Well, I got I got Tuesday, Wednesday this week at the store, but I'm gonna be gone in Brazil for the rest. Right. And I only got that's what I called in for. I only got one spot. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna be able to. I'm not gonna get out on again until Tuesday. No. Yeah. I had to call. I'm like, who's on the cover booth tonight? You gotta let me slide in. Oh, look at you! You use your once juice. in a while, but not once in a while. Only when you need to, though. I'm saying there's no way you go off like a year with nothing. Who's making that fucking list at the comedy store? It's fine not to give me one day out of the week. Silly fucks. I'm writing a new hour this year. Are you? Yeah. Are you throwing your old one out? What are you doing? Yeah. Done. Chucking it. Done. Did you make a DVD? Made a CD. Got to make a DVD, son. Can't throw your material out without a fucking visual representation of it. Yeah. Got to That's go outrageous. On. A lot of your shit is visual. Yeah. Make what get someone to hire someone to film you. Cheap prick. And make a make a special. Yeah, just own. put it online. Release it to people. Yeah. Give it to the world, Ari. Make a video. Make a video. You need a video, dude. You can't just have a, an audio. My first CD yeah. uh, was uh, I was upset that some of my shit wasn't visual. Didn't so read. We, yeah, I went we, over that Made a lot. videos like, of it and released them. Do. Just put it online after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of shit like the um, the old lady vagina bit. That's that's What's a that? there's a lot of visual in that. Shh, boom. You know. I don't remember that. Your hand at, all. at the bottom. Boom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's visual. You need that part. That's a big part of why it's funny. With the How are you gonna have, Which one? What happens when to a woman's vagina? She gets oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't yeah. say any more. There's a kill. Oh, yeah, yeah. That would be a little visual. Very, very visual. Yeah. The fuck, Ari? 
So people want to see you, where can they see you, Arch, for this upcoming Minneapolis show? Where is it Minneapolis, at again? It, uh, it's houseofcomedy.net. Houseofcomedy.net. And you'll be in Chicago at the same time. Yes, I will be in Chicago. The 27th? Is it that weekend? It's 25th or the 29th, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be in... Um, there's still some tickets available, but they're going fast, bitches. Joey Diaz and Duncan Trussell. We're going to be at the Chicago Theater That'll on uh, January 27th. And if you see Joey on stage, Joey will probably be not walking so good because he's just going to have surgery 10 days before oh. that. He's getting his Maybe get him one of those little scooters, those little Zippos, <laughs> Zippies, or whatever. He really should get him a scooter. But if anybody wants to get him some flowers and say, oh. get well... Get him some yeah, cards. Like say, that. get well, Joey. Fuck flowers. Give me the cards. Get out of here with this fucking cards and flowers. Just, just give him a lot of envelopes. envelopes. Yeah, give me an envelope with cash in it or nothing. He loves envelopes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Joey will be there supposedly. I hope he's going to be able to make it, but he's getting surgery 10 days before. Oof. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Sometimes. Yeah, tight scheduling. Uh, Duncan's going to be there for sure. I'll be there. And then uh, there's the UFC on Fox the next day. You can see that. Or if you're closer to my man Ari Shafir. You go to Minneapolis and go yeah. to the houseofcomedy.net. Houseofcomedy.net. And Ari it's will be that weekend. America. How many days are you there? Five days. Five days. Damn. Wow. That's nice. That's time for a relationship. Yeah. yeah. You, you, yeah. Could, you could meet a new girl and fall in love and then totally grow possible. to hate each other by the time <laughs> yeah. the 27th rolls around. Work the whole like, nexus of it. Exactly. Boom. Special. Thank you to The Fleshlight for sponsoring our podcast. If you go to JoeRogan.net and click on the link for The Fleshlight and enter in the code name Rogan, you will get 15% off the number one sex to learn from man. Thanks, oh, Fleshlight. shit. Thanks to Onnit.com, O-N-N-I-T, makers of Alpha Brain, the cognitive enhancing supplement, New Mood, Shroom Tech Sport, and Shroom Tech Immune. Go to the link on JoeRogan.net. Click on it for the link for Alpha Brain. Enter in the code name Rogan, and you can get 10% off. All right. Thanks, everybody. Next week, we have uh, Hamilton Morris from Vice.com. We're going to be uh, going uh, on an isolation tank tour. We're going to go to Venice. Really? Yeah, and we're gonna, he's going to come on the podcast as well. And I got Steve Ranella from, uh, what's that show called? The Wild Within, which was a really cool show that got canceled. And now I think he's got a new show called Meat Eater. So he's going to be on the podcast on Meat Monday. Eater. Yeah. That's cool. All right, you dirty freaks. Uh, vote well, for me. Yeah, Brian's got Brian some Shorties. fucking silly internet contest. He wants everybody to vote for him. For he only needs like 300 votes to, to win. Just go to DeskSquad.tv, and at the top it says vote for me. Just click on that. That'd be awesome. And I'll be at Waterbeds and Stuff Thursday. Waterbeds and Stuff? You're doing shows at Waterbed Factories? No, I'm just going to what is buy and a stuff? bowl. And it's, it's the only place to buy a bowl in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to buy a bowl? Yeah, they sell waterbeds and pipes. Huh. What? <laughs> and that's where you're going to be? Yeah. Are you no, doing they, a all show there? To, they all listen to this podcast. Are you doing a show there? No, I'm not going to do a show there. You do a show there. Why are you there? Nah, I'm just going to buy a bowl. Don't and be scared. Go to hoggies. <laughs> Don't be scared, homie.com. <laughs> Thanks, oh, everybody. Oh, oh, one more thing. I interviewed a hooker on my podcast this week. Damn. It's a really real good. one? Yeah. Uh, well, High class prostitute. Really? Yeah. Ooh, how do people get that? Go to, I guess, that. iTunes or my website, aritthegreat.com. Aritthegreat.com. Is it good? Good, in, good conversation? It was long and good. Really? She just told me everything. Oh, my God. Ooh, I'm going to listen to that. It was really fun. I'm listening to that on the flight to Brazil. <laughs> this is the five other things. It's a long flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. You fucking freaks. Very nice. We love you guys. We Thanks. love everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks, ever. Thanks for everybody. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Thanks for everything. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. For everything. I've been talking too much today. My mouth doesn't want to work anymore. Jihad.